testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing on the English channel, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah okay. Testing, testing. <laughs> Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. Testing? Testing now in the English? Yes? Okay.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the seventh annual EU conference on EAFRD financial instruments, where we'll be taking stock of the 2014 to 2020 period and looking ahead to what's coming next. My name is Dave Keating. I'm a journalist based in Brussels, and I'm going to be guiding you through today's presentations and discussions. At this virtual conference, organized by the European Commission in partnership with the European Investment Bank, we're going to hear from policymakers and people on the ground about what's working and what isn't working, with live transmissions from Greece, Spain, Luxembourg, Romania, and Poland. Before we get started, I have a question for you guys at home. I'd like to know where you're watching us from. So you'll see a poll question pop up on your screen right now. The question is very simply, where do you come from? You've got all the EU countries there as options. Uh, so you can tell us where you're watching. That's gonna be super helpful for us. While you are answering that poll question, let me let you know some of the technical specifications for today. And I'll walk you through how the platform works that you're on right now. Um, so as you may have already noticed, I'm speaking in English, but we're going to have a few languages today. Luckily, there is interpretation available from and to French, German, Italian, Greek, and Spanish. Now you'll be able to see any upcoming polls here on the platform. You can go ahead and vote in those as they pop up. You'll also be able to type in questions that I will ask the panelists in our two panels. So you can just type those in. We ask you to please type those in in English. Uh, there's no interpretation available for that, I'm afraid. Uh, and then I can read those out to the panelists uh, in the two Q&A panels uh, by, again, using that chat box. Um, then also, uh, if you at, at the bottom of the platform, you can find uh, links to relevant publications and podcasts that are available. If you have any technical issues, you can contact the technical chat support on the platform. And finally, just so you're aware, today's conference is being recorded. Okay, let's go to those geographic results about where you guys all are. So no surprise, a lot of you are in Belgium. Whenever I do these geographic surveys for these conferences, there's always a large contingent in Belgium, but also a large contingent in Luxembourg. I imagine that's a lot of EIB people. Uh, we also have a large contingent coming from Greece, watching from Greece, uh, Italy, Poland and Romania are also very well represented. So thanks for filling that out. That's really good to know so we know where you guys are coming from. We have one more poll question for you. We'd also like to know what type of institution you're working for. So the next poll question is, what type of institution do you work for? Are you working for a managing authority, national government, a local public authority, a farm union? Are you with the media? Go ahead and answer those now, and we'll uh, read out the results of those a little later. But now we're going to move on to our keynote speeches of the day. So I would first like to introduce our first keynote speech from Janusz Wojciechowski, the European Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development. Dear Minister Livanos, dear Vice President Ketel Thompson, dear Mr. Poferi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Allow me welcome all of you to our conference today. I can see there are more than 200 attending. I am pleased to see so many and I think you are all for joining. I I also like to thank the chair of Comagri in the European Parliament, Mr. Norbert Linz, and the Slovenian Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Food, Jose Podgorsek, for their support on today's subject of financial instruments. Farmers need accessible financing with good conditions. This is the basis for our financial instruments of the CAP, which we have been promoting now for only seven years. Uh, in 2015, nobody expected that we would achieve so much in such short period. Back then, financial instruments was just a phrase that we talk about. Since then, it was evolved to uh, 
848 million in programmed public money, of which 645 million is uh, in the EFRD. In 2015, only a few ex-ante assessments took place. Since then, uh, 32 financial instruments are up and running across 11 member states, in the most recent example being Lithuania, who just launched their first financial instrument a few days ago. Uh, the list of success uh, stories is uh, long, and you will hear more from Director Michelini later. But let me say uh, that I am uh, grateful to everyone, from those uh, in my services to those in managing authorities who have contributed to the development of financial instrument in the common, common agricultural policy. They have become more and more a significant part of our common agricultural policy, and this is path will continue with our reform. Uh, this reform comes uh, at uh, in, uh, an important point for agriculture. We have to find new ways to deliver on uh, the expectations of society and achieve much more on the ground with our farmers. With the new common agriculture policy, we must bring solutions to many challenges, to fight climate change and uh, sustainably manage our natural resources, to contribute to food security and to maintain the European Union's position as a world leader in international food trade, to provide a fairer distribution of the uh, CAP budget to support farmers in times of crisis and to help ensure that agriculture is attractive for young people and that rural areas are thriving. In short, we have a policy that is expected to deliver on many fronts and to do it amid the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, where do we uh, currently stand uh, on the new policy? Uh, the new CAP will enter into force on the 1st of January uh, 2023. The basic acts are uh, to be adopted and published in uh, early December this year. Uh, at the same time, the work on the secondary legislation is advancing. We are proceeding as fast as possible, but we can only adopt the secondary legislation after Council and Parliament adopt the basic acts. I'm confident that uh, Parliament, Council and Commission remain fully committed, having the full legal framework formally adopted and published in time. As a next step, the Member States need to send their common agriculture policy strategic plans to the Commission before the end of this year. The Commission will uh, then have six months to approve them. The Commission is uh, already engaged in fruitful cooperation with all countries and uh, we are helping them to uh, clarify important, uh, important points. The schedule of, for submission, assessment and approval of the CAP plans is challenging, but it is necessary and I'm confident that is achievable. I'm also confident that uh, when implemented, uh, the new CAP will be effective. It is in the hands of Member States to prepare ambitious plans that follow strategic approach focused on performance and delivery. Uh, by doing this, they can achieve long-lasting results for our farmers and our citizens. I am uh, I'm aware uh, that uh, there are concerns on how, to, uh, how the transition to more sustainable practices may have uh, uh, an, an impact on the competitiveness of our farms. But from a business point of view, continuing with business as usual is simply not an option. Uh, I would undermine that 
health of our ecosystem, which is the basis for all production and profit. Let me recall that biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation is one of the biggest threats uh, facing humanity in the next decades, with farmers at the front line of this threat. The CAP plans therefore firmly support our farmers as a step up to environment and climate ambitions. The Commission has therefore uh, invited member states to indicate how they will contribute to the relevant Green Deal targets to be achieved by 2030 in the areas of uh, pesticides and antimicrobials reduction, the expansion of organic agriculture, the reduction of uh, nutrient losses, and the development of broadband coverage and landscape features. If common agricultural policy plans tackle the uh, underlying cause of the problems at national level and use the CAP resources wisely, we should uh, be in uh, a good position to arrive at a sufficient level of contributions. So what resources do we have to achieve these goals? The European Union budget for 21-27 includes a total amount uh, 386.6 billion for the CAP in current prices. For rural development, for which financial instrument can uh, be set up, the total allocation amount is almost 96 billion euro. This includes 8 billion from next generation EU as additional envelopes for 2021 and 2022, challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The reform CAP offers a number of tools that can direct these funds towards the uh, pursuit of social, economic, uh, and environmental sustainability in agriculture and rural areas. Uh, the first pillar of the common agricultural policy has an allocation of uh, uh, 299.9 billion, of which 270 billion will be for direct payment to farmers, representing 70% of the CAP. The current distribution of direct payments clearly shows that professional family farms receive the bulk of the direct payments. In the new CAP, member states will have to design an intervention strategy to address the specific uh, redistributive needs. Increasing payments to smaller farms uh, in uh, this context is a key. Uh, the complementary redistributive income support tool, uh, we decide at least 10% of the direct payments budget to this objective, and the small farmer payments will also be an optional for member states. This support can be combined with financial instrument, grants under rural development or national support to allow small farmers overcome the current difficult times. Uh, and uh, we uh, are here to discuss the success and uh, challenges of using financial instrument, I would like to outline their role in the new common agriculture policy. Uh, I have already outlined opportunities for our farmers and the challenges and expectations uh, that our agriculture sector is facing. The CAP budget cannot address all the financial needs that come with these opportunities our challenges and expectations are much higher than CAP budget. And this is why we have to make sure that all possible sources of financing are efficiently and fully utilized to close that gap. In this context, financial instruments come into play. They are not the solution to all financial problems, but they can be uh, the facilitator to set up 
the investments we need to better uh, meet society expectations of farming. Let me recall that uh, before the pandemic, the gap of bank financing for agriculture was estimated up to 49 billion. Nowadays, with uh, the new and ambitious objectives we have under the Green Deal, it is potentially much higher. Already the financial uh, markers often do not uh, reflect the specific requirements uh, of agriculture. Farmers receive access to generic products under basic conditions with uh, demanding uh, collateral uh, and short uh, maturity of uh, the loans and they, they are changed with uh, comparatively high interest rates. Often farmers also get more, res uh, more results when they apply for loans between a uh, quarter and a uh, third of uh, those applying for loans do not get approved. All of um, these market def uh, deficiencies can be addressed if the right public response is taken and financial instruments are a possible way forward. By using financial instruments in their CAP strategic plans, member, state, member states may remove up obstacles to investments and provide farmers, uh, including startups, with the, uh, the lending condition they need. I support uh, those of you who have decided to continue the, uh, their current financial instruments into the future. And I strongly encourage uh, those of you who are not yet considering financial instruments to do so and invest into this policy tool. This is why we make financial instruments even more attractive in the new common agriculture policy. Standalone working capital financing is possible under all relevant strategic objectives. Eligibility rules are uh, simplified. And importantly, we have eliminated uh, the restrictions for purchase and land by young farmers. I firmly believe that uh, financial instruments can make a big contribution to the success of uh, common agriculture policy strategic plans by stimulating strong investments uh, in the sustainability of our farms and rural areas. Uh, moreover, if we are to meet the environmental objectives of the European Green Deal, it is uh, vital that uh, we reorient capital flows and investments towards environmentally sustainable practices and uh, sustainable projects and activities. Uh, to link, uh, to financial uh, uh, turning to financial instruments, there are a number of uh, sustainable and uh, profitable business opportunities that can be supported. Take bioraffineries, the production of uh, biofertilizers, protein feed, bioenergy and uh, biochemicals. They contribute to the transition to a climate neutral European economy and generate new jobs in primary production. Uh, the making of biogas from other sources of waste and uh, residues such as uh, front of food and beverage industry, uh, savage is another, uh, another uh, opportunity. It is clear that we will need investments in this and other areas if we want to enable rural areas to seize opportunities for sustainable economic growth. Investments in innovative solutions and new technologies, investments to help rural SMEs start uh, or develop their activities, investment that uh, can help to improve the quality of life in rural communities, make it more attractive for young people, shorten supply chains and uh, open new markets thus helping also the fight against rural depopulation. Unfortunately, just like the agriculture sector, rural areas suffer from 
significant lack of finance, uh, finance projects are often unable to attract investors of funding, although they are economically viable. And uh, it is here where financial instruments under the rural development policy can step in and help. They can facilitate green and digital investments through lower interest rates, longer uh, repayment uh, periods of uh, free guarantees, for example. Uh, their advantage is that once they have been repaid, they remain for the member states and can be reused to support new instruments for the same uh, or different financial instrument. So I think it is clear uh, the financial instruments are a strong tool to be considered when budgets are limited and demands are high. Before finishing, let me uh, do some adverta uh, advertising. As some of you may know, the European Union Agriculture Outlook Conference will take place, place online on 9th and 10th of December. The theme of the year is Fit for 2030, Resilient European Agri-Food System and Rural Areas. The conference will examine the future of the global agriculture markets in 2030, and it will be a great opportunity to highlight the role of farmers in resilient and sustainable food systems. This is key for all European citizens and uh, the medium and long term. I warmly, warmly invite you to sign up for the conference and to follow it online. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you to your participation and interest today. By working together using financial instruments and all possible tools, we can reach the targets and objectives necessary to secure the future of our food and farming. With this, I wish you a very nice day and a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Commissioner. Now, I think when people think about financial instruments for agriculture, maybe they think of only large farms, but can these financial instruments also be relevant for small farms? Yes, of course. There is, there, there is the problem uh, that uh, we, during one decade, we lost four million farms in European Union. The 1,000 farms each day, they stop their farming. This is a negative process. We need to, to stop this process. It uh, shows that we need also to use the financial instrument to support the small farmers, not only for the large-scale farming, but for small farmers. This is very important. And this is one of the priorities of the new common agriculture policy, to strengthen the support for, for small and medium-sized family farms. Yeah, it makes sense. And we'll be talking more about that yes, later today. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Commissioner. I think you can Thank hang you. around for a little bit. We're going to go to Athens now uh, to hear next um, from Spilios Livanos, the Greek Minister of Rural Development and Food. Dear Dave, dear Mr. Keating, thank you very much for the floor. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a good return, so I couldn't hear uh, the, the speech of the commissioner in a whole. Uh, in any case, I'll try to, to pick it up from where he left it. Uh, dear uh, commissioner, uh, dear vice president of the European Investment Bank, dear chair of the committee of the European Parliament, uh, dear Minister of Agriculture of Slovenia, uh, dear Vice President of Copa Cozeca, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to participate in today's seventh conference on financial instruments organized by DG Agri together with the European Investment Bank. Access to adequate financing is one of the key issues that concerns us in the Greek agri-food sector. In the last decade, the agri-food sector of our country 
has encountered significant problems in accessing financing despite remarkable durability in terms of employment and added value. The types of loans shift from expansion and modernization to coverage of the immediate needs of the production process. A shift from medium long term loans to short term loans. Specifically, agricultural holdings succeeded to raise funds through the micro loans and short term loans at the rate of around 24%, while success in gaining medium long term loans did not exceed 8%. The same is true for small manufacturing companies. On the contrary, a more balanced combination of short-term and medium-long-term financing was achieved by medium and large manufacturing companies. Satisfied demand amounted to up to 25,000 euro for agricultural holdings and up to about 100,000 euros for manufacturing companies and focused mainly on working capital. Satisfaction We may have lost the video connection there for the minister. Uh, perhaps we can try to go back to him in a bit. I think in the meantime, let's go to Luxembourg. No, we're going back to Athens. We think we have the connection again. Equity and collateral and high interest rates. In addition, the breach of trust between banks and business led to a reduction in social capital, which represents an equally important size for economic growth. The financial gap, the difference, in, order, in other words, between the demand for funding and the corresponding offer, was appreciated during our ex-ante evaluation to about 2.5 million euros for agriculture and about 1.5 billion euros for the processing of agricultural products. This gap was subsequently confirmed in a relevant study of three compass for 24 countries, including Greece. According to the results of this study, the financial gap for agriculture could even reach 14 billion euros in our country. To reduce the financial gap, the contribution of RDP 2014-2020 is significant, representing a comprehensive strategy with targets, including, first, the greatest possible leverage of public resources, second, improving funding conditions for farmers and processing companies through coverage of the largest part of the expected losses for the financial institutions. Third, improving competition in the funding offer of the, for the agri-food sector. And fourth, development of targeted but flexible financial products. In this context, and in cooperation with the European Investment Fund, we have already put into full operation the Rural Development Guarantee Fund, with the total estimated amount portfolio at 480 million euros. As presented below in detail, funding is already provided to hundreds of farmers and processing of companies with particularly reduced collateral, lower interest rates and lower transaction costs. The guarantee fund was particularly accepted by the agri-food sector for the first weeks of operation with a very high demand. However, the offer began to respond to a much slower space. The banks required even more promotion of the tool, but also faster and more efficient application management. Banks must also assume their responsibilities and accommodate the circumstances. Banks should trust agricultural production farmers and producers and join us sharing the risks. Worldwide and for, and for Greece, the analysis shows that there is great potential for growth in this area. But it is worth emphasizing that the realization of investments, once their funding is approved, is extremely fast. As you will see in the relevant video created by Fee Compass in cooperation with our ministry, through Piraeus Bank and Cardiza Cooperative, within first nine months of operation, significant investments, however small scale, 
have already been made. Investment enabling beneficiaries to modernize and make their production process even more environmental friendly. In addition, we have accepted the investment strategy of the fund to correspond with the liquidity needs of farmers and processing companies affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Specifically, we provide working capital loans with the same attractive financial terms and with highly flexible procedures which do not require the submission of a business plan. However, although the Rural Development Guarantee Fund <coughs> provides loans with particularly reduced collateral, a large number of farmers, but also manufacturing companies, are unable to provide such collaterals even for very small loans. To cover this area of demand, we're taking advantage of the recent legal framework enabling the possibility to establish microcredit providers. In this way, through the RDP 2014-2020 and the resources of the Union Recovery Inst Instrument, we're introducing a new shared risk lending fund. In the new fund, both banks and microcredit providers can participate as financial intermediaries. The investment strategy of the new fund provides a combination of loans with interest rate sub subsidy and with technical support for the recipients. Our purpose is make this tool attractive both for beneficiaries as well for financial institutions. Specifically, we aspire to contribute in the development of loan products amounting to 25,000 euros offered with little or no collateral, with interest rate subsidy for the first years of repayment and with the possibility of supporting beneficiaries who are unfamiliar with this type of funding. Subsequently, beneficiaries will be able to develop and properly execute their business plan. Further, by attracting as many players as possible, we encourage growth through an ecosystem of micro in the agri-food sector and significantly reduce risks of financial institutions. In the same, in this new age of complex challenges, of the new digital reality and multiple crises, the agri-food sector is called upon to produce more, better and safer products, respecting our national resources and reducing the climate footprint. The required transformation of the agri-food sector inevitably creates significant financial needs. To meet these needs beyond public and EU resources, the development and reinforcement of further financial instruments are also required. Through our initiatives, we're developing a solid foundation to improve access to finance for Greek farmers and processors. We're seeking to attract investors to increase available resources. This effort will continue in the period 2023-2027 by continuing the use of financial instruments in the framework of the strategic plan for the common agricultural policy. We want to build the required skills with the help of Fee Compass in order to advantageously benefit from the possibilities provided by the new regulatory framework. Thank you very, very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Minister. We're now going to move remotely from Athens to Luxembourg. We'll next hear from Christian Kettle thompson Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, and dear Commissioner Wojciechowski, dear Minister Levanos, dear participants, I'm very pleased to welcome you today to this seventh annual EU conference on EA FRD financial instruments. Agriculture and rural development are central for the EIB's ambition as the EU climate bank and in implementing EU development policies. The food systems remain among the key drivers of climate change and they need to become more sustainable, as it was also stressed by the Commissioner. And as stated in the Farm to Fork strategy of the EU Commission, 
There's an urgent need to reduce dependency on pesticides, reduce excess fertilization, increase organic farming, improve animal welfare, and reverse biodiversity loss. At the same time, if managed in a sustainable way, the bioeconomy can sequester significant amounts of greenhouse gases in soils and primary biomass at relatively low costs, and thus providing an active contribution to climate change mitigation. Besides its ecological importance, rural development and bioeconomy are, of course, crucial for addressing the socioeconomic divide at the regional level in the EU. Just a few days ago at COP26, we announced our new adaptation plan, and it sets out the strategic approach of the EIB to increase our support to adaptation activities, which is another essential factor for the transition to a more sustainable and more resilient agricultural sector. Climate change affects the sector in a number of ways. Changes in temperature and precipitation can influence crop yields and livestock productivity in some areas. And increased risks from extreme weather events, water availability, pests and diseases can affect the, quality, the quantity, the quality and the prices of agricultural products. For these reasons, investments to enhance the resilience of agriculture to climate change, as well as in research and development in innovative technologies, will be essential in the coming years. The bioeconomy is therefore a key sector in our Climate Bank Roadmap, adopted last year by our shareholders, the EU member states. The roadmap ind indicates how we will dedicate more than half of our lending towards green investments by 2025. With the roadmap, we've already become the first multilateral development bank to al align all our financing activities with the goals of the Paris Agreement. The importance of agriculture and bioeconomy for the EIB is also demonstrated in our lending volumes. In the last five years, the EIB has provided more than 30 billion euros of co-financing in the sector. More recently, to finance the bioeconomy, we have also developed targeted lending instruments, some of which with central EU guarantee support. These include two consecutive program loans for 400 million euros and for 700 million euros to support companies and cooperatives in the bioeconomy sector. Intermediated loans deployed through our local partner banks for around 1 billion euros, targeting SMEs and mid-caps with a special focus on young farmers. And a 200 million euros European circular bio economy fund that will invest in innovative companies and projects. Whilst the EIB is doing more to support this, the sheer scale of investments needed to address the climate and innovation challenges I mentioned before means that this is clearly not enough. We now need to harness the power of more private sector investments. We have to use scarce public resources more smartly to do so. And this is where the topic of financial instruments comes into play. They can be a very powerful tool to develop agricultural policy and make EA FRD funding go further. The guarantee instrument set up in Greece as mentioned by Minister Levanos just before, is a very, very good example of this. And you'll hear more uh, later, later today, you'll hear more about this. Our sister organization, the European Investment Fund, is supporting EA FRD managing authorities in the rollout of a number of financial instruments through its mandate management activities. The agricultural-related mandates managed by EIF provide for over 3 billion euros of leverage support to potentially more than 20,000 farmers and small and medium-sized enterprises. But it is not only about financing. Technical advisory support is also key. I strongly believe that the Fi Compass platform, which is hosting today's event, has brought an important contribution also to these developments. 
Since the launch of the platform five years ago, Five Compass has, among others, organized more than 30 awareness raising events. It has provided managing authorities with targets and coaching, and it has published a wide range of guidance materials. All these actions have succeeded in the creation of an active community of practitioners, which has been crucial to make this culture shift. From pure grant-based support to the use of more efficient, revolving mechanisms like financial instruments. Bruno Rubino, head of Five Compass here at the EIB, will tell you more about Five Compass products offered to managing authorities in the course of the conference. Under the Future Invest EU program, we already see instruments and advisory support packages that will be useful also for the agricultural sector and particularly with respect to climate change. One such tool that we are developing as the EU Climate Bank is our Green Gateway Advisory Platform. This platform offers support to financial intermediaries interested in financing more green projects including in the agri-sector. Another example, another excellent example of cooperation in the area of financial instruments has been the initiative launched jointly with DG Agri in 2016 to raise awareness of the potential to combine EA FRD resources with financing from the European Fund for Strategic Investments, EFSI as we also call it. This initiative offered a comprehensive package for managing authorities, including a free of charge feasibility study carried out by Five Compass, the potential to mobilize every resources, and reliance on EI's mandate management expertise and services. The result of this work was that resources have been combined, giving added financial firepower to be, de to be deployed through regional and national intermediaries in France, Portugal, and Greece, to more farmers and agribusinesses. Together with our colleagues in DG Agri, we want to make sure that managing authorities will continue to benefit from this advisory support. And in this respect, we aim at continuing the Five Compass advisory platform into the new MFF. Ladies and gentlemen, many thanks again for the opportunity to join you here today. And let me wish you a successful conference and success with your ambitions to provide more financial and technical support to this important sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Mr. Ketzel Thompson. Now, next, we have a pre-recorded message from MEP Norbert Linz, Chair of the European Parliament's Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development. Dear Commissioner Wojciechowski, Minister Livanos, Mr. Kettle Thompson, dear Mr. Pessonen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to the seventh annual conference on EA FRD financial instruments. Today, it is not only about taking stock, it's also about looking ahead. But in order to set the right course, for the future, it is often worth taking a look back. You may all know the numbers. In the current program period, financial instruments have so far been programmed in 32 rural development plans in 11 different member states. Behind this is a total budget of 614 million euros of EAFRD and 830 million of total public expenditure. We can see more and more managing authorities are implementing financial instruments and targeting a wider range of measures. This is a great success compared to the previous programming period. But on the other, on the other hand, not even half of all member states have financial instruments in their rural development plans. There is still a lot of room for improvement. There are many reasons why 
financial instruments are still a slow seller. We are currently dealing with a very low interest rate level on the financial market, which, which makes further interest rate reduction hardly possible. But we also see that the interest rate level is rising again. Another obstacle is that the critical mass for setting up funds is hard to achieve, especially in smaller member states. But sometimes louder, sometimes quieter, we can also hear from the member states that the programming of financial instruments is complex. Too complex? It's a challenge to deal with the banking system while at the same time integrating the paying agency system and on top having the ex-ante evaluation. But in the future programming period, financial instruments for agriculture investments will be more important than ever. The EU Green Deal and its accompanying strategy will require additional invest investments from farmers. Not everything will and can be covered by public funds. We are dependent on the cre creative will and courage of farmers to take the path of more sustainable agriculture. And this implies investments. Investments in more sustainable agriculture practices such as precision farming. Investments in more animal welfare, such as more animal welfare friendly stables or investments to address climate change. At the same time, studies have shown that it is particularly difficult for farmers to obtain funding for those investments. Why? It is hard to demonstrate that such investments yield higher profit margins, but for the agriculture sector to meet society's expectations, additional support in accessing finance from financial institutions is essential. We are addressing these challenges in the new CAP strategic plan regulation, which will be voted on in plenary in November. The new CAP will support the transition to a more sustainable agriculture with more ambitious climate, environmental and animal welfare targets through the implementation of the national strategic plans. It is also introduces new tools which will enable more efficient and targeted performance in the areas of environment, climate and animal welfare. During the CAP negotiations, the European Parliament have insisted that these aspects are emphasized more strongly and particularly advocated that future EAFRD investments meet the new priorities. And the European Parliament advocated simplification to make the use of member states' own financial instruments and the one under EU invest more attractive. For example, there will be simplifications in the programming of financial instruments or the requirements related to ex-ante assessments. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Kettle Thompson and the EIB for their perseverance in making the financial instruments a success story. In this context, I would also like to appeal to the Member States' representatives among you. Complexi complexity, uh, complexity cannot be an excuse for not acting. We owe it to our farmers to provide them with all assistance possible on our common way to a greener and more sustainable future. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all an informative conference with many new ideas. Let us continue to work together on the success of the financial instruments. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mr. Linz. Next, we have a pre-recorded message from Slovenia. We'll hear from Jože Podgošek, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Food for Slovenia, which currently holds the rotating EU presidency. Honorable Commissioner, dear Janusz, and colleagues from the Commission, President of the European Parliament Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, Norbert Linz, Greek Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development, my colleague Spilios, 
senior representatives of the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund, representatives of Copa Kojeka, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure and honor to be able to address you today at this conference. The timing of the conference brings many important start starting points for discussion. In my short address, I would like to focus on two key points. The role that financial instruments can play in providing sufficient capital investments to adapt agriculture to future climate, environmental and economic challenges, and the importance of financial instruments uh, at the time of the expecting tightening of the general government expenditure following the COVID-19 pandemic. If I touch upon the first point, I would like to emphasize that all member states of the EU are in the final stages of preparing new programming documents for drawing EU funds. Slovenia is also stepping up its prepare preparations of a strategic plan for the common agriculture policy for the following financial period. As you are well aware, the aim of the European Union's future common agriculture policy is to continue to provide strong support for European agriculture, enable prosperous rural areas and produce high quality food. As many as nine common EU specific objectives form the basis for the new common agricultural policy that more than even before in history will have to tackle a wide range of em emerging environmental and climate issues, as well as the social and economic challenges of agriculture and rural areas. Expectations are therefore focused on providing a multifunctional model of agriculture, which in addition to food production, also provides ecosystem functions and contributes to the preservation of a vital and cultivated countryside. Knowledge, innovation and investment will be needed to support the green and digital transformation of the agriculture, forestry and food sectors and to accelerate the transition to a carbon neutral society. Agriculture alone will not be able to secure large-scale capital investment and investment in knowledge and innovation, which is a precondition for pursuing the EU's ambitious goals. It is therefore necessary that we as decision-makers provide an appropriate supportive environment in which such investments can be made. In addressing both pressing challenges, financial instruments can be a lever for activating additional capital investments, but with a smaller part of public funds. Namely, they encourage the participation of private investors and financial institutions on the basic of appropriate risk sharing and a more careful and strategic planning of investments on the part of the final beneficiaries as the funds for investments need to be returned. Due to the multiple turnover of the same amount of funds and the obligation to replay, the introduction of financial instruments brings a more economic use of public funds, which will become the reality of all countries, including Slovenia, together with a more restrictive fiscal policy. The transition to a new way of financing development, therefore, brings a shift away from grants, which is a big change for agriculture unlike for the rest of the economy. This will require a great deal of caution, taking into account the lower income situation in agriculture, the large share of subsidies in the factor income of agriculture, the specific seasonal nature of, a cut of agriculture compared to other industries, the small size of family farms, as well as the markedly unfavorable age structure of farmers. It will therefore be necessary to ensure that financial instruments are adapted to agriculture, which is more specific than other industries, and that financial pro products provide significantly more favorable financing and insurance conditions for farmers. In this respect, we welcome the fact that the new legislative framework of the Common Agricultural Policy introduce a number of flexibilities in the field of financial instruments, also in order to ensure 
that public funds reach the beneficiaries and as soon as possible. I believe this is a key advantage of financial instruments since the speed of access to fresh capital for investment and reduce administrative complexity of documentation are sometimes crucial for a quick restructuration and the success of a farmer's breakthrough, breakthrough in the market. Now I would like to say a few words more specifically about the introduction of financial instruments in the field of agriculture in Slovenia. The results of the FI Compass study published last year show a significant gap in the availability of financing also for Slovenian agriculture and agri-food sector. This is particularly true for small farmers and young farmers at the level of the primary agriculture production and small and medium-sized enterprises in the agri-food sector. The reason for this are the lack of credit history as well as the interest rates and the cost of guarantees that are usually higher than in other industries. This is also the reason why Slovenia decided to try to introduce financial instruments for the first time in the following financial period. We have already gained quite a bit of knowledge in this area as we have been working to establish financial instruments already in the current programming period. However, taking into account that the current financial perspective is soon coming to an end, we did, we did not want to risk not using the funds. We will start gradually and cautiously by developing financial products for young farmers together with the appropriate financial institutions. Young farmers themselves have also expressed their interest and desire to introduce repayable forms of supports and in addition to grants. In this way, we want to facilitate the intergenerational takeover of the farm and further development in the direction of competitive but also sustainable agriculture. In this approach, is successful, we will continue to introduce financial instruments. We need experience and new knowledge. Above all, it is important that stakeholders in the agriculture sectors accept financial instruments as their own. To conclude, the new programming period is approaching very fast and financial instruments, also in combination with grants, will become an increasingly important tool to support investments implemented under the strategic plan of the common agriculture policy. My expectations in this regard are that financial instruments using the resources from the European Agriculture Fund for Rural Development should support the agriculture and agri-food sector in particular in order to achieve the progress needed for the European Green Deal and the achievement of the ambitious goals in line with the new biodiversity strategy by 2030 and the farm to fork strategy. With this, I would like to conclude my address and thank you for your esteemed attention. Best regards. Thanks very much, Mr. Podgorshek. So let's go to those, the results of that poll question you guys answered before about which institutions you're coming from. We'll pull up those results now. So the majority of you, uh, or the plurality of you rather, are coming from managing authorities or national governments. We also have a number of you from European institutions and organizations, and a large number of you from the media. That's interesting, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, we also have a good number of local authorities, uh, and then others, uh, including researchers, consultants, and project developers. So that's really, really good to know where you guys are coming from, what you're working for. We'll definitely keep that in mind that so many of you are coming from managing authorities and national governments. All right, so let's move on to get a view of the European farmers and agri-cooperatives on the access to finance and its importance for EU agriculture. I'll turn the floor over now to Leonardo Poferi, Vice President for the Farmers Association, Copa Cogeca. Dear Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is a great honor for me to be with you today for the seventh annual EU conference on EFIRD financial instruments. 
I would like to thank the European Commission and the European Investment Bank for giving the opportunity to European farmers, forest owners and their cooperatives to contribute to this event. They are the ones who work every single day to ensure food and biomass security to both EU and world citizens and businesses and contribute to maintain the viability of rural areas and enhance environment sustainability even in these difficult times. Let me briefly remind uh, the most significant figures of Copa Cogica. We are the united voice for agriculture in Europe and we represent on one side some 23 million of farmers and their families, and on the other side more than 22,000 cooperatives with a global uh, turnover of more than 300 billion of euros. We as Copa Cogica, we support the objective of the European Green Deal and we agree that the future common agricultural policy should include concrete measures to address more environment sustainability, climate change mitigation and adaptation. The future CAP must seriously facilitate and enable future investment in agriculture and forestry and the innovation that we need to continue feeding Europe future while transitioning towards more sustainable production systems and a bio-based economy. However, this must not be done at the expense of the economic and social sustainability and competitiveness of the EU farming sector. The ability to attract investment, like in any sector, by the way, is crucial for the future of our farming sector and for our cooperatives. This means supporting investment through grants facilitating and enabling access to credit and helping out in providing guarantees for loans. All these require a coherent, stable and long-term policies and tools to adequately manage risks. In addition, synergies between various funds and tools such as CAP, Horizon Europe, EU Investment, just to mention the most relevant, and private financing, including sustainable financing, are key elements for us to unlock investment opportunities. Beneficiaries need legal certainty and a clear picture of what is available. Simplification and less administrative burden are also crucial. The CAP is the main policy to help our farmers and plays a crucial role in maintaining vibrant rural areas and assuring an economically, environmentally and socially sustainable sector. The three pillars, that's a crucial point for us, the three pillars of sustainability are at the core of any farmer business. They are interdependent and mutually strengthened one another. The EU has the highest sustainability standards in agriculture and forest in the world, mainly due to the important investment that were made during the last decades. We have, have to say, some concerns on the recent developments on the work of the Commission on Sustainable Finance. We cannot reinvent the wheel, if I may use the expression, by proposing new sustainability requirements for future investment and completely ignore, on the other hand, the current rules implemented and the efforts made and still being made by the agri-food and forestry sector. This will put this sector in an unfair position compared to other and will discourage future investment when it have to move forward to more sustainable practices. We need criteria that boost the transition rather than focusing on unrealistic practices that in many member states are not even implementable. There is a serious risk to allocate sustainable finance to a very limited number of beneficiaries and therefore hindering the key policy objective. Rules governing the eligibility and access to investments must be simpler and above all less bureaucratic and not represent disproportionate red tape for beneficiaries. While farms and cooperatives are investing to boost their long-term competitiveness and sustainable growth, as well as contributing to the creation of a low-carbon, climate-resilient and circular economy, they clearly perceive that some shortcomings could impact on their future investment and increase red tape. Even the future non-financial reporting requirements must consider that in our sector, most business operators are micro, small and medium enterprise. The agri-food and forestry sector, now more than ever, needs to count on the support and investment towards more sustainable technology, production methods and businesses. 
ensuring access to finance and investment for farms and agri-food and forestry cooperatives is of paramount importance. This has become imperative, especially under the new circumstances created by the COVID-19 pandemic, where agriculture and forestry need to recover from current crisis while continuing their transition towards greener and more sustainable production methods. Let me also highlight the important role of cooperatives. Their key investment allowed the implementation of innovative and sustainable action that create employment in depopulated areas and benefit farmers, consumers and the overall functioning of the value chain. Leading in sustainability is not only one of AgriCorp's core strategies, but it also represents a cooperative view that encompasses every single aspect of their business development. The long-term vision for rural areas, another of the European Green Deal initiatives, is a key element in this broad approach. Since a decade, one of the biggest innovations we're experiencing is the agriculture and forestry sector is linked to the implementation of digital tools and the use of big data. Agriculture and forestry have moved forward into an era of digitally enhanced activity, and we need to be able to continue this. The digital transformation of European Union agriculture is an opportunity for EU farming and forestry community as long as the digital transition works for all, putting people first and opening new business opportunities. Productivity gains in all production methods positively contribute to sustainability and environment and the climate. Access to high-tech technologies proved crucial to maintain food supply during COVID-19. It is also crucial for the competitiveness of the EU agri-food and to deliver on the EU objectives and the Paris Climate Agreement. Farmers and their cooperatives must be encouraged to invest in technologies that reduce emissions and increase carbon capture and recycling that make economic sense. Agri-cooperatives need to be considered as tools that with sound and long-term business planning play a critical role in mainstreaming innovative solutions to achieve these goals. Smart villages, communities in rural areas that use innovative solutions to improve their resilience, building up on their strengths and opportunities are fundamental to secure the development of rural areas, and such to be at the core of the long-term strategy of rural areas. European farmers and agri-cooperatives should be equipped with the right toolbox, developed hand-in-hand -hand with cutting-edge scientific progress. Therefore, European farmers and agri-cooperatives must be given available, safe, effective and affordable tools and the means to use them. Increased investment into research and innovation at European level may allow the agriculture and forestry sector to go further with the environmental sustainability of their production and should be always encouraged. Innovation uptake can only be secured through their involvement in research and innovation activities alongside adequate investment in affordable, cost-effective technologies investments in broadband, including reliability, interoperability, digital skills and advisory, digital innovation hubs, new business and governance model, as is the case of the code of contact on data sharing. Access to up-to-date technologies is a key factor in keeping European agriculture competitive on a global market and maintain our high standard. We really cannot afford to lose time by refraining from use cutting-edge technologies such as new plant breeding techniques, artificial intelligence and digital technologies. When I think about tomorrow's agriculture, my mind focuses on the fact that today only 11% of all farmers are younger than 40. Simple demographics tell us that we will need to work harder to attract even younger people to farming and keep them active in the sector. The ability 
to attract and support investment, like in any sector, is crucial for the future of our farming sector and for our cooperatives. Without an adequate set of tools for the next generation of farms, I fear we will witness a real shortage of active farmers. Therefore, we will not be able to deliver on Green Deal objectives and on food security. However, I'm still quite confident that financial instruments will continue to play an important role in the future CAP in providing the right tool to our sector to increase its resilience and sustainability. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Pofferi. So uh, you talked a little bit about there of the priorities for farmers. So when we're thinking specifically about future investments, what would you say are the main priorities for farmers coming up? Well, during the COVID-19 crisis, our sector has proven to be a real milestone of our economy. And if I may say, it has gained back the crucial role it deserved in, in the society. But now, in order to increase our resilience and to continue the transition to a more sustainable and circular agri-food system, investment and innovation really need to become the pivotal point of the global strategy. And then, I mean, Looking at these two transitional years, peers, and even more in the perspective of the entry into force in 2023 of the new CAP that you, uh, you all know is based on the so-called new delivery model, there are really some expectations that member states and region will be able to put in place an overall strategy, an holistic approach through their national strategic plans, which put at the core of the strategy investment. And I'm referring spe specifically, but not only, the investments in technology and infrastructure, which are re uh, urgently required to support the efficiency and productivity of, of farm business and to increase competitive and sustainability. And when it comes to sustainability, of course, we have been speaking of the Green Deal, which is, of course, one of the main drivers of the European Union. And if we look at the content of the strategy linked to the, 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 the Green Deal, uh, the Green Deal uh, and I'm mentioning especially, of course, the farm to fork strategy, uh, the, the, um, the biodiversity strategy, and so on, I mean, we really see that farmers and the cooperative will need to undertake substantial so-called, let's say, green investment in order to meet with the highest expectation that these are indicated in the strategy. So we expect expel, on the other hand, a change, let's say, of approach from the banking sector that from the time being has not always been able, let's say, to reward this kind of investment aiming at, let's say, respond to adaptation and climate change needs. You mentioned also the modernization process, the need to bring in younger farmers. What's the role of FI in that whole process and what more could be done to facilitate the access to finance for farmers? And I'm thinking in particular for younger farmers. Yeah. Well, as a preliminary remark, we always have to take into account that there are huge differences among member states. Uh, so we are not pledging for a sort of one-size-fits-all solution, but we have, on the other hand, on the contrary, to look carefully at the specificity of regions, so on lo at, local, at local level. Uh, we might, let's say, stress two main elements in our views. Uh, the first one is the need for a stronger complementarity and synergy amongst finance, financial tools. The second one is the room of maneuver for uh, even reinforced communication and involvement of representatives of the sector. Um, when it comes to the first point, uh, financial instruments of, have of course the potential to leverage private sector funding in order to stimulate the greater levels on on farm investment and boost the modernization of the European sector. And in particular, financial instruments co-funded by CAP could be one of the most appropriate solutions that can help member states and regions to invest in the growth and development of their territories. However, we insist on the need to have a greater synergy, a greater complementarity between these funds and the financial private instrument. I'm referring, of course, to grants, uh, long-term investment loans and guarantee, especially when the targets are SMEs and young farmers. Uh, so there's really a need for beneficiaries to have a clear and complete and overall picture of what are the funds available. 
On the other point that I was mentioning, uh, especially in STEM member states, there's really a need of a better communication and uh, promotion of the opportunity provided by the financial instrument. And farmers, a cooperative uh, organization, in our view, should be actively involved in the discussion, in the preliminary discussion on the setting of these financial instruments in order to be sure that they really respond to the real needs of the sector. Well, thanks you very much for that walk through the perspective of the farming sector. I think that's really useful for a lot You're of people out there. We're going to move on to our session dealing specifically uh, with Greece now. We're going to look at the case of the Greek EAFRD Guarantee Fund from 2014 to 2020. We'll start with a video that's going to explain the Greek EAFRD Guarantee Fund, and then we'll hear from Kostas Apostolopoulos, Head of Evaluation and Institutional Support Units at the Greek Managing Authority, who's going to tell us about the financial needs in Greek agriculture culture and the role of financial instruments. Αυτό το δάνειο περιελάμβανε την αγορά ενό τρακτέρ ε, και κάποιων παρελκομένων για την κατεργασία εδάφου, όπω επίση και μια σπαρτική μηχανή. Τα οποία θα βοηθήσουν στο να γίνεται πολύ πιο γρήγορα η δουλειά από ό,τι πριν, δηλαδή να έχουμε ε, καλύτερη απόδοση σε λιγότερο χρόνο, όπω επίση ε, θα έχουμε και πολύ καλύτερο ε, αποτύπωμα για, για, το ρήπο, για του ρήπου. Θα έχουμε λιγότερο δηλαδή αποτύπωμα. Λόγω του ανταγωνισμού και των τιμών αρχικά. Επομένως έπρεπε με κάποιο τρόπο να συμπιέσουμε το κόστος παραγωγής και να αυξήσουμε την ποσότητα παραγωγής αλλά και την ποιότητα. Αυτό γίνεται μόνο με νέα μηχανήματα έτσι ώστε να καλύψουμε τα κενά των διασφαλίσεων που έχουν οι νέοι αγρότες οι οποίοι δεν έχουν αρκετή περιουσία ή αρκετά λεφτά στην άκρη έτσι ώστε να καλύψουν αυτό το κενό τέλος πάντων που χρειάζεται. Φτάσαμε στο σημείο να πούμε ότι το συγκεκριμένο εργαλείο της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης είναι αυτό που γεφυρώνει ας πούμε, το κενό ανάμεσα στην τράπεζα και σε εμά. Συνιστώ τα συγκεκριμένα χρηματοδοτικά εργαλεία στους αγρότες, διότι είναι χαμηλότητα, παρέχουν τις εγγύσεις που χρειαζόμαστε έτσι ώστε να πάρουμε τα δάνεια και με αυτόν τον τρόπο θα παραμείνουμε ε, ανταγωνιστικοί στους άλλους αγρότες. Για τρέλ commencé à, à m'occuper de, de la vinification. Et puis cette année, j'ai complété ma 42e fois de vendange. Et là maintenant, je, je me retrouve à la fin de ma carrière et j'ai mes deux enfants qui, qui ont étudié pareil. Donc ils sont à peu près dans une liaison plus ou moins dans le domaine, dans le dans domaine vinicole. Je suis très content que la nouvelle génération euh, a pris les relais sur euh, les, la direction du naturel. Permaculture is the optimum ecologic uh, farming. Uh, we use uh, local grape varieties and we continue working on the traditional uh, pruning system uh, of the region using old traditions and new uh, technologies. Uh, we don't use any spray from the industry, we produce our own uh, sprays. This spray machine I bought um, has a computer on it and uh, connected with a GPS we can adjust the spray with my uh, speed of uh, the tractor and also it makes a very very thin drop that can stick on the leaf of the vine. I'm using one third less uh, solution of spray and also ve is very light. I, uh, I'm not using more gasoline and also I'm not pressing the soil. Uh, on the soil we have all the uh, this microcosmos that gives you the quality of your grape and also the roots are searching the minerality, the freshness and also the saltness that we, f we want to have on the wine. The bank helped me, they were very supportive uh, they understand the work that I'm doing. They also, it's also a bank uh, for farmers. It's a green bank also. So we have the same ethos uh, and philosophy of, of, this, of this work. 
the Rural Development Guarantee Fund is a fund of funds that has been set up with uh, resources from the Rural Development Program and the European uh, Fund for Strategic Investments. The Rural Development Program contributed 80 million to the uh, fund and the uh, European Fund for Strategic Investments another 20 million. The instrument aims at improving financing for farmers and processors of agricultural products by providing loans for investments as well as in working capital. This financial instrument has many benefits for farmers and processors that allows them to undertake investments to modernize their farms and make them more sustainable. Αυτό το κτίριο έχει δυναμικότητα 23.000 πουλιά. Έχουμε ένα κεντρικό υπολογιστή με τον οποίο ελέγχουμε και το νερό και την τροφή, και τη θέρμανση, την ψήξη, τα πάντα όλα μας. Με την καινούργια αυτή επένδυση έχουμε πολύ καλύτερες επιδόσεις γιατί δεν έχουμε καθόλου από όλες ενέργειες. Λόγω του υλικού που χρησιμοποιούμε είναι ότι καλύτερο μπορούμε για μόνωση και με αυτό βοηθάει και, στο, και στην ψήξη και στη θέρμανση. Αυτό το κτίριο εδώ πέρα ε, από... ήταν ένα χωράφι. Και όλο, ό,τι βλέπουμε τώρα εδώ πέρα, ό,τι έχει φτιαχτεί, από τεχνολογία, από κατασκευή, όλο είναι από αυτή την επιδότηση. Ο γεωργικός ελκυστέρης αυτός είναι καινοτόμος ε, και μπορεί να σου κάνει οικονομία σε σπόρο, λίπασμα και να μην χάνεται κατεργασμένο έδαφος χωρίς να υπάρχει φυτό που κάτω από αυτές τις συνθήκες μπορεί να γίνει η οικονομικότερη καλλιέργεια. Η, η επιχείρησή μας είναι οικογενειακή περιουσία. Για ένα νέο αγρότη είναι πολύ δύσκολο και διότι δεν υπάρχουν εξασφαλίσεις αυτές ώστε να πάνε να δανειστούν από κάποια τράπεζα. Και αυτό το εργαλείο, το χρηματοδοτικό εργαλείο τον βοηθάει περισσότερο από ό,τι φανταζόμαστε. Θα πρότεινα τους συνάδελφούς μου Ευρωπαίους Αγρότες να ασχοληθούν με αυτό το χρηματοδοτικό εργαλείο διότι δεν χρειάζεται εξασφαλίσεις εγγύησης από μεριά μας. Είναι μικρό το κο... Δεν υπάρχει κόστος για τις εξασφαλίσεις αυτές και είναι και ταχύτατο. Καλημέρα σε όλους τους συμμετέχοντες στο δομο συνέδριο για τα χρηματοδοτικά. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kostas Apostolopoulos from the Managing Authority. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present the role of uh, financial instruments to the agri-food industry in Greece and how the program contributes to this process. A few words on the financing needs in the Greek agri-food sector. Uh, a few words about the design and the setup of the Rural Development Guarantee Instrument. A few things on the implementation of the instrument. And finally, a few key points, the, the lessons learned and future planning. As the minister, Mr. Levanos, said earlier, the ex ante assessments completed in 2018 by the EIB, uh, as well as the FI Compass study of 2020, show a huge financing gap in the agri-food sector uh, for agriculture and processing. The main reasons, the main explanations on the supply side are related mainly to the strict lending policies by the banks as a result also of the economic crisis in the last decade. There's also lack of adequate competition on the market to provide financing to farmers. On the demand side, I would say that farmers cannot offer collateral, uh, do not 
have the credit worthiness to receive financing from the banking sector. This is also a result, of course, of the structural characteristics of Greek agriculture, which is based mainly on grants. Now, the objectives we said during the planning was were mainly to reduce the gap, ensuring leverage of RDP resources to improve lending conditions, taking up a part of the risk. We tried also to improve competition in providing financing to the agri-food sector and also to develop a targeted tool which at the same time would be flexible, taking into account dependence on grants, something that could be combined with grants, that is. So our investment strategy included setting up a guarantee tool up to a certain amount for submeasures for one and for two investments in uh, farms and processing. Loans ranged from 10,000 to 5 million. The cap concerning guarantees for the entire portfolio is up to 35%, 80% for individual loans, final beneficiaries, uh, farmers with minimum economic size, economic activity 8,000, uh, or other collective uh, farmers' schemes. We also address processors, processing plants for certain agricultural products that you can find in Annex 1 of the treaty. Loans can be combined with grants those under the RDP, or they can be under other measures or co-financed schemes. So in this way, we set up the Rural Development Guarantee Fund managed by the European Investment Fund. This is a fund of funds with the participation of seven financial intermediaries. We have the Cooperative Bank of Karditsa, Thessaly, Piraeus Bank, Procredit, the National Bank of Greece, Eurobank, and uh, Pancretan Bank. The Rural Development Guarantee Fund enjoys, as I said, the support of the EIAF, which co contributes another 20 million. RDP, 80 million, EFSI, 20 million. Total 480 million, which means a leverage uh, six times the funds of uh, the Rural Development Guarantee Fund. The advantages, thanks to the participation of EFSI, are cascaded to the final beneficiaries. Thanks to a reduction of up to 100% of uh, collateral requirements, with interest rates that are lower by half up to 1.25 percentage units and lower transaction fees. In implementing the fund, we set several objectives. We wanted a simplified procedure for the submission of application by final beneficiaries. We tried to reduce the risk for the banks concerning the eligibility checks We also tried to provide banks and financial institutions as much data as possible in order to combine their loans with grants. And we also tried to put together all the data required in order to be able to evaluate the performance of the fund. We developed an IT tool through which the final beneficiaries, from the moment of the submission of the application, can combine data from IX, the integrated um, audit and control system, and FADN, in order to calculate some uh, fundamental parameters, the type of the holding, the total surface area used, etc., etc. On 
this basis, this ID tool, this application carries out specific checks. They check whether the financial size exceeds 8,000 euros, which is a selection criterion. And some compatibility uh, checks uh, concerning working capital or it also calculate the loan, the maximum loan amount. Then the accepted applications are forwarded to the banks by email. We also send all the data until uh, all this is uh, stored in a se secure FTP server or other tool. Another interesting thing about the tool is the sort of information it can produce concerning the combination uh, between grants and uh, the instrument. So we combine data from the applications of the farmers, well, the final beneficiaries in general, with data from the various grant schemes. And this calculates to what extent grants meet the criteria of Annex 2, uh, or we can proceed with uh, a loan. We also carry out other checks concerning whether, for example, the sum of grant plus loan exceeds the total cost of the business plan. All this information is forwarded, as I said, to the banks and to the various other agencies providing grants so that there is um, adequate interface between the two. Now, some uh, key lessons, some key experiences. There was um, good demand. We have 1,045 unique applications. 37% are combined with grants. 19% of the requests also apply to working capital, and the majority comes from in, uh, farmers for investments in holdings. Total, 86 million euros. Please note that the average loan requested is 30,000 uh, euros for, for the investment and 20,000 for working capital. These are small loans, you, you understand. But we're moving forward. We have already approved 260 loans on the basis of uh, unofficial data of October 2021. More than 70% of them require no collateral. Average maturity is 98 months. The approved loans account for 14.2 million euros. You can see these are small loans. The median is 30,000. And the median gross grant equivalent is only 5,000 euros, quite low again. Now, on the basis of our experience, we learned that um, FIs require skills and capabilities among the managing authorities. But it's not that difficult because there are so many sources of experience and data. Take uh, targeted uh, coaching or conferences like this one today or the publications of FI Compass. Then the ex ante evaluation and the support provided is a huge advantage. So there's lots of experience we can gain during the financing, the, the signing of the financing agreement. For the purpose of the FIs, FIs, we need, of course, some ex ante planning. We need the engagement of all interested, interested parties, all stakeholders, especially the final beneficiaries, so that the expectations can be streamlined, can be aligned with a reality, because there are things that we can do and things that we cannot do. The FI must be user-friendly, both for the banks as well as for the final beneficiaries, providing flexibility and simplicity. 
based on IT applications, FIs, especially when they are applied for the first time, need time. There's no doubt about that. We need time because the design and the implementation of uh, financing instruments need time. The banks need time to become familiar with the particular features of FIs. And of course, the final beneficiaries also need time in order to become more familiar with the instrument and uh, engage. So for the next programming period, as the minister said earlier, we'll continue to run the Rural Development Guarantee Fund. And we aspire to adopting some of the innovations of the regulatory framework. We want to participate at the targeted coaching uh, with a fine the next weeks. And we also have to explore the opportunities resulting from the combination between grants and uh, any single financial instrument. So thank you very much for your attention. Over to you, Dave. Thanks very much, Costas. That's very helpful to be able to know what exactly the financial needs are. Um, so now we're going to transition to talk about the implementation of the Greek EAFRD Guarantee Fund. So we're going back to Athens now, and we're going to hear from Ioannis Chaniotakis, who is Senior Director for, the Agricult for Agricultural Retail Banking at Piraeus Bank. <laughs> Good morning. I am Yanis Hanyotakis from Piraeus Bank. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to participate in this conference, which means a lot for us. We would like to share with you our experience from Piraeus Bank, our experience with the implementation of the Rural Development Guarantee Fund, the first financial instrument in Greece that targets the agri-food sector. Piraeus Bank has um, opted um, to support the Greek economy, focusing on um, healthy economic activity and an outward-looking approach. Our market share is 30% of the market in terms of customer loans and 29% in terms of customer deposits. Our bank supports the agri-food sector. This has been a strategic choice for us because this is a pillar of the Greek economy. So the bank is trying um, to support the agri-food chain and at the same time, we place emphasis on the, on the primary sector because of its importance uh, in terms uh, of social and environmental reasons. In order to better understand the context, I will mention some factors that have an impact on investment in the Greek agri-food sector. First of all, Agri-food is of high importance for the Greek economy. It has also been very resilient under the economic crisis during the last decade and then after the pandemic, during and after the pandemic. This shows the path um, for those who participate in the agri-food sector so that they will s start investing. There is a large share of small farms in Greece. That could be a disadvantage, but it also has certain advantages, especially uh, what we can see through this um, financial instrument is that a lot of uh, small farms or SMEs benefit from uh, financial instruments and um, they invest with considerable investment 
achieving an increase in the added value of their products and in reducing their costs. Another important fact concerning the Greek economy is the low share of young farmers. And I believe this is a characteristic of uh, the European economy as a whole. Young farmers have a different attitude and they have a higher level of specialization and a higher educational level. So they can have a long-term view of their activity. This is also linked uh, to their attitude uh, that is uh, favorable for investment. It is very important to mention the rural development program of the common agricultural policy. A high focus is placed on investment. Recently, we have seen uh, that um, traditional cooperative, cooperative schemes are coming back and there are new eco schemes, new forms of agriculture as well, uh, contract agriculture for instance, that has been actively supported by the Bank of Piraeus since 2013. These offer a new dimension and this uh, cooperation facilitates the raising of awareness so that um, all stakeholders in the value chain can invest and adapt their businesses to the market. The key characteristics of the products that we have created as part of our financial instrument uh, include reduced interest rate, at least 50 basis points lower than uh, normal interest rates, lower needs for securities, no more than 40% of the loan, and a lower lending cost. Investment loans range uh, from 10,000 euros to 5 million euros. Working capital which must be combined with an investment project starts from 10,000 euros and goes up to a larger amount. Maturity for investment loans is from 2 to 12 years and for working capital 1 to 8 years. Repayment is quite flexible. The recipients can select between monthly, quarterly, six monthly, or even yearly installments, depending on their farm requirements. Now, concerning the advantages for the borrowers. First of all, the market gap has been filled. There is greater access for producers to the banking system and to finance. And I would like to especially mention young farmers and startups because they start with a disadvantage. They have a lack of credit history. However, through the financial instrument, this is being remedied. Now, in order to promote these loans, we have used traditional means, that is, our branches, so in branch promotion, we have used the digital media, and we have used the press. It is a fact that more information was required, more information for producers, because they should um, realize the specificity of these loans and uh, the compound benefits of these instruments. Then in a second wave of information, we prepared texts that would give this information to producers in a straightforward, simple way. 
Moreover, we contacted the advisors of producers, that is, the people who advise them on their investment, and through these advisors, once the advisors themselves realized the advantages of financial instruments, we managed to have the advisors advise the farmers. Now, let me give you some uh, facts about our performance so far. 202 loans have been approved for 7.1 million euros. 35,000 is uh, the average amount, so they're relatively small amounts. What is important is that 87% of disbursed loans are loans with no collaterals at all. This is something that uh, would be very difficult in the past. One out of two borrowers are younger than 40 years of age, and one out of four borrowers are women. There is a wide geographical distribution of financial beneficiaries, and this shows that information has spread throughout the country, and the loans have become popular throughout the country. Arguably, there have been certain uh, bottlenecks. Some of the key blocking points uh, were our difficulty to directly contact our clients. Because of uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, we couldn't have direct uh, contact with our clients. Then the economic crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic also affected the investment appetite of producers. Initially, we had not um, really uh, a good grasp of the gross grant equivalent impact. Some farmers did not like the idea that they had been included in some uh, co-finance programs and they would lose approximately 15% of that financing. A small percentage, but still important for them. The working capital uh, should be linked with investment, and this is a fact that um, did not work well for all borrowers. Concerning SMEs in the primary sector and in the processing sector, there have been competitive financial instruments that met their needs in working capital. Finally, another blocking point was uh, that um, uh, financing for land purchase was not included or irrigation improvement. This is something our clients had asked for. In summary, our experience with these financial instruments has uh, greatly benefited us as a bank. We had excellent cooperation with the Ministry for Rural Development, with the EIF and the EIB. Each one of us uh, spoke a different language about the same topic, and we had a different point of view. Our combined experience has led to the fact that we are now very optimistic about the future, about this financial instrument, and about other financial instruments in the future. Back to you, Dave. Thanks very much, Ioannis. That's really helpful to see how the actual implementation of the Guarantee Fund can work on the ground. So our next speaker there in Athens is going to be Panagiotis Trinovitis, Chief Executive Officer at the Cooperative Bank of Kardica. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present the work of our bank in Thessaly, in the region of Thessaly, in the context of the Rural Development Guarantee Fund. This is a program, thanks to the co-financing of the EU and the EAB, in the context of uh, the EAFRD and the EF. 
SI. Our cooperative bank was established in 1994 as a credit cooperative. We are in operation since 1998 as a financial institution. We have uh, five branches providing services to more than 12,000 members, we have more than 25,000 clients, mainly uh, farmers, SMEs, independent professionals, and uh, other categories. We are members of the Cooperative Bank Association of Greece, uh, six members, 57 branches all over Greece. Some key fi features of our bank. During the prolonged economic crisis in Greece, we never had to resort to any sort of grant or to the ELA. We didn't receive one euro from uh, the Greek taxpayer, no recapitalization required. We had to face two bank runs. Uh, still, as I said, we never had to resort to the emergency liquidity assistance mechanism. So based on our own forces, we move forward and keep developing and with sustained profitability. Of course, no growth can be achieved without synergies. We have partnerships with the uh, European Guarantee Fund, the EIB and other development banks. We are uh, members of the Ethical Bank Association, Yemen, and, and several other networks through which we benefit from know-how. Since 2015, our bank, thanks to these partnerships, carried a supervisory uh, review and the EAF, or Technical Assistance, we were ranked B-, minus, which confirmed the consistent quality of our bank. And we enjoy uh, very high capital and liquidity ratios. Thanks to these characteristics, even during the economic crisis, we managed to keep implementing our mission we supported local entrepreneurship. We kept supporting very small enterprises, uh, farmers, and independent professionals. We kept developing, even during the crisis, the number of, of uh, members, for example, and deposits show the quality of the trust we enjoy among the community. Support to the agri-food sector is a strategic choice for our bank. We offer a comprehensive support scheme to meeting these needs. More than 25% of our loans goes to loans to the primary sector. The solutions we offer cover a wide array of uh, financial products to reduce the energy footprint, for example. We also give loans for expansion, microfinancing, investment loans, uh, working capital, contract uh, cultivation, etc. And we, al we also offer consulting packages for farmers and cooperatives, and we also develop specialized solutions such as uh, the AgroCredit Score, a platform which, when fully developed, it will combine satellite data, open data, big data, historic meteorological data, etc., to assess the risk per hectare for specific cultivations. This will be a valuable tool for our farmers. All these products have been carefully designed so that they are streamlined with the sustainability goals of the UN and, of course, the Green Deal of the European Commission. Now, I'm coming to the specific uh, program, the Rural Development Guarantee Fund. Uh, we engaged in August 2020. 
in the last year or so, we have promoted the scheme through branches, through social media, through the local press, and we have uh, received applications corresponding to more than 15% of the available portfolio. Uh, we're talking about 2 million euros. I would like also to stress the importance of modifying the initial agreement, which will allow the inclusion of uh, working capital, that is, uh, irrespective of any specific investment. We provide important advantages to our members, lower interest rates, lower collateral, uh, lower transaction fees, etc. However, however, we're still not happy with the results. The good news is that we still have two years ahead. During these two years, we'll keep supporting the primary sector and uh, we'll try to contribute to mitigating uh, the implications of the pandemic. Now, a few parameters that would allow increasing the absorption rate. One obstacle is the high GGE accrued for each proposal. In some cases, it uh, exceeds 20% of the proposed loan. This is a no-go, I'm afraid, uh, in cases of co-financed investments. Uh, for example, in the cases where we receive also funds from LIDA and other programs. Then there's no adequate information on the appendices platform, a Greek uh, investment platform. So there's no direct information to final beneficiaries concerning how much, for example, they can uh, receive from uh, our fund. So many applications do not continue when beneficiaries uh, learn that they will see their funds reduced they will go back on their application of course we also have covid we have the prolonged crisis we have the problems of the supply chain the skyrocketing cost of uh, raw materials etc all these are problems for the completion of um, investments in the context of the fund the pandemic, I'm afraid, is still uh, raging. So I'm afraid we should explore extending the eligibility period for applications. So to conclude, I would say that the Rural Development Guarantee Fund is a great first step to support and further develop the rural economy. The pandemic and other issues have kept absorption rates quite low, but we look forward to engaging with all partners in order to reach our ambitious objective. And I'm sure that the fund will show its dynamic, supporting the primary sector, transforming farming and processing, developing incomes will lead to local growth, creating new jobs, fighting unemployment, and making our economy more resilient. Thank you very much. Back to you, Dave. Thanks very much, Panagiotis. So we're now going to move on to the panel Q&A session uh, over there with the folks in Athens. You guys will be able to ask your questions to the people in Athens uh, by just typing them into the platform there. You can type them in, I'll receive them, and I can read them out to the panelists. So let's begin the Q&A panel.
So we have one more panelist who hasn't spoken already that I'd like to introduce. That is Anthi Katsirma, Evaluation Manager of Evaluation and Institutional Support Unit at the Greek Managing Authority, who will also be joining us for the panel question. Anthi, why don't I put the, the first question to you. Um, could you describe for us your monitoring system and how you report the outputs of the financial instruments? Thank you, Dave. Concerning the monitoring of the financial instrument, we have a two-level system. The first system concerns final recipients and the banks, and the second level is the rural development program as a whole concerning all measures. Concerning the first level, where we monitor the final um, beneficiaries and the banks, we have set up an IT system concerning applications, uh, inclusions, and payments. Part of it is the IT tool that Mr. Apostolopoulos described a while ago. Uh, we also have reports to the seven banks, quarterly reports, and uh, reports at the end of the year. The, uh, the banks submit these reports to the EIF, uh, and then the EIF um, uh, combines them and brings them to us. The data collected from the banks and the final beneficiaries concern final beneficiaries, their contract agreements, um, the number of final beneficiaries uh, per sector. This is the monitoring system in brief at the micro level of final beneficiaries and banks. We have a second monitoring system at the higher level of the rural development program. There we have an integrated information system. This gets information from the micro level. And the second part of this system is the annual report submitted by the Rural Development Program to the European Commission every year, and the data collected concern payments and inclusions, total public spending for the beneficiaries, total number of the contracts, and total number of beneficiaries. So we have these two monitoring systems, and we uh, meet 100% of the target set by the European Commission. Back to you, Dave. And the Costas, let's turn to you. So from your presentation, I could tell that you've put a lot of effort into combining financial instruments with grant schemes. Can you give us a little bit more detail on how you did this combining? Thank you for this question, Dave. Yes, indeed. We have invested a lot in uh, collecting information, codifying information, and uh, providing this information to the financial institutions and the bodies that implement the grant uh, regimes. We collect the data through our IT tool, and we make it available to stakeholders. At the same time, we have uh, had a lot of meetings with banks, with the implementing bodies, um, in order to explain uh, the overall framework and how the instruments can be combined, and in order to explain the role of each party in this cooperation. However, the combination of grants and uh, financial instruments is not an easy task. It requires a lot of communication with um, a wide range of stakeholders, and this is not easy to achieve. It also needs changes in the managing system applied by each one of these bodies. And this is why we hope that in the coming period, we will be able to combine the, 
the tools, grants and financial instruments, and we will be able to further combine and better combine these tools in order to achieve even more ambitious investments. Thanks very much, Kostas. Ioannis, a question for you next. Um, you mentioned possibilities for future financial instruments. So what new financial instruments could be proposed for implementation in the Greek markets? From our experience of the Euro Development Guarantee Fund, we see that this is a rather generic uh, tool. Well, that's how it should be, because it, uh, it is an all-encompassing uh, instrument for the specific period. Now, on the basis of our experience, the next steps, apart from the microfinancing tools announced today by the minister earlier, well, in my opinion, future instruments could become more specialized. Let, let me let me try to explain. We heard from most speakers this morning about the importance uh, of sustainable growth. For us also, for the bank, supporting sustainable growth is very important. Can this be served by a generic tool? Yes, of course, why not? But if we had a green sustainable fund financing specific actions, well, this would help financing uh, needs and it could actually encourage farmers to proceed to specific investments that is related specifically to green growth to create uh, a green footprint in production. So the next steps could probably uh, relate to more specific, more specialized tools. Back to you, David. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, so my next question is going to be for Panagiotis. Um, so you, you referred to the small transaction amounts that your bank usually deals with. So how does your bank cope with the small transaction amount you referred to, and do you believe that the, res that the, res the response is, is relatively quick to beneficiaries' applications? Thank you, uh, Dave, for this question. Indeed, our bank, because of the geography, and our loan portfolio is a bank focusing on microfinancing. We focus on the small farmer who does not have access, direct access to financing. That is why we use the specific tools, the specific instruments in cooperation with the EAF. I'm talking about the microfinancing instrument. So we are direct, we are fast. We know our area very well. We know the people. We know the investments. So the result is that we are uh, really quick in providing a response. Pre-approval only takes a few weeks. And the final decision for inclusion of an invest investment plan uh, does not exceed a few weeks. As I said, back to you, David. Thank you. Well, we've had a question. We've had a question come in from the audience for Costas. Uh, so, Costas, here is the question from the audience for you: How do you deal with the gross grant equivalent (GGE) concerns? How do you deal with concerns about GGE? Uh, well, GGE. comes from the regulation, the margin of maneuver of the member state to amend the GG, uh, well, are practically non-existent. Therefore, this concept, the gross grass grant equivalent, 
is there. We cannot do anything about that. What the managing authority can do, however, is not to provide the maximum threshold, the, the, the cap in case of actions that will be combined with the financial instrument so that there is some additional margin between the grant and the cap resulting from the regulation. So this um, leeway, so to speak, can accommodate the GG in order to avoid the curtailing of already approved investment plans. So the final beneficiary in this way, if they wish, of course, to do so, to combine grants with the financial instrument, they will receive a lower grant. And this will be complemented by the GGE, which will not exceed the maximum cap provided by the regulation. This is the only way I see uh, for the managing authority to do uh, something concerning the GGE issue. Otherwise, we cannot just uh, forget about the GGE. The benefits of the financial instruments are there thanks precisely to the benefits of the strategic rural development uh, plan. These benefits are important. These benefits would not exist without the grant. Now, the GG is a corollary of this uh, scheme. GG is there, will be there. So let us try to find it, the best balance between grant and GG in order to avoid uh, surprises for the final beneficiaries. Back to you, David. Thank you. Thanks, Costas. Uh, our next question from the audience is for Anthi. <clears throat> Anthi, uh, the question from the audience is, do you know the number of rejected credit applications from the target group of the FI? The rejected number? No. I'm not sure we have this number. We, we still do not know the number of applications that have been rejected. This financial instrument has been there for less than a year. We don't have the annual report yet, and we don't have the information on rejections. Back to you, Dave. That's fine, yep, so the, the information is not available yet. Uh, Ioannis, a question for you next. Um, what do you think could be improved in the process of launching a new financial instrument? What we have seen during uh, the last um, time period is that we need a fast response in this specific financial instrument, for example, we needed to cooperate with the Ministry for Rural Development and the EIF in order to discuss uh, how these FIs would not be combined with an investment loan when, uh, we, um, when we provided working capital loans. The FI for working capital will uh, be used as of December this year without pre-existing, without a pre-existing investment. And in order to do that, we had to react fast. So the first thing is um, reacting fast to the needs of the market. The second point is simplification. I understand that there is a given framework, but when we talk about microfinance, There could be a certain simplification in the way we monitor loans through time and uh, during the reporting phase. So uh, fast response together with a sim simplification of the procedures depending on the type of each instrument. This is what uh, could help. 
Thank you. Back to you, Dave. Great, thanks. Uh, Panagiotis, next question for you. Uh, you mentioned a bit the effects of the pandemic. So how has the pandemic affected the appetite for investments in the primary sector? This is a very interesting question. Indeed, the pandemic has had a series of impact um, and uh, it has impacted on uh, the appetite for investment in the primary sector. They are a bit hesitant. Potential investors are a bit hesitant. They may have some approved investment projects, but the cost of raw materials uh, has increased. The supply chain uh, has uh, sometimes delayed the delivery of products. So there is a certain hesitation. I think uh, they are um, on a wait and see situation before they take the next step. We are in contact with quite a lot of potential investors and what we witness is that they sort of expect uh, the pandemic to be over. They wait for a certain calm environment so that they can move on with their investment projects. Back to you, Dave. Thanks. The next question is for Anthi. Uh, Anthi, what kind of evaluation activities do you implement for the financial instruments? As an evaluation unit, we have developed tools and procedures for the evaluation of financial instruments. We started with the ex-ante assessment of the financial tool. This was something that all member states had to do. It was mandatory. And then we continued with certain um, evaluation actions that are not mandatory, but will help us improve the financial tool use. So a first step was that we sent out uh, questionnaires, online questionnaires, in order to of uh, the financial instrument. And sometimes they have some additional requirements. This was the first uh, evaluation activity. The second one was a series of bilateral meetings with each bank separately. We did that in order to evaluate the difference between um, applications and approval. There was a certain divergence. The findings concerning this divergence show that some of the applications did not meet the sustainability criteria. And the most important reason was that these applications were lodged in a period where there are opportunities for new grants. And uh, the result of that is that uh, some of the applicants postponed their decision for a long-term loan, and they preferred uh, to wait for a grant. And the last um, evaluation activity was concerning the loans, something that we did through the IT tool, a tool that is used with other grant systems. And we found out that loans are um, uh, small loans for small amounts. For farming businesses, approximately 30,000 euros is an average loan. In the agri-food sector, 50,000 euros. There is, however, a large number of loans. We also analyzed the amounts um, and the number of loans by, uh, per bank. And we analyzed loans in comparison to the size of businesses. The correlation showed that we had small agricultural businesses with high needs in loans. In order to increase the take up of this tool, we believe that we have uh, to um, step up our pace for approving applications. And uh, we have to promote the loans to larger businesses in the farming sector and in the agri-food sector. Thank you. Back to you, Dave.
Thanks a lot. We have another question from the audience. This one's for Ioannis. Uh, question is, how do you recover the 20% of a loan which is not covered by the guarantee in case of default of the final recipient for the loans without collateral? In the context of the evaluation, we put to good use our experience in agricultural credit. You know, in our sector, we try to mitigate uh, the risk. Uh, so the, the answer, Dave, is uh, that thanks to our know-how and experience and thanks to our system, we can uh, mitigate the inherent risk. Back to you, Dave. Thanks a lot, Ioannis. Well, that's all the time we have for the Q&A panel. Thank you to all four of you in Athens for some great insights on how this stuff really works on the ground. We really appreciate it. So now we're just about ready for the short break where you guys are going to be able to get a coffee. But before we go to the break, I have another poll question for you that should be coming up on your screen now. It's about what you've just heard from the Greek managing authorities. Uh, so the question is, after hearing the experience of the Greek managing authority, what, according to you, are the key success factors in setting an implementation of an EAFRDFI? So you can look at those various factors that could be the keys for success, ex ante assessment, experience implementing body, simplified rules. You guys can go ahead and answer that uh, during the break. And when we come back from the break, You'll find out the answer. Uh, so we'll take a 15-minute break now. We'll be back here at noon Brussels time uh, so we can hear more about the EAFRD financial instruments, their importance for future CAP strategic plans. Uh, we're also going to be hearing from three EAFRD managing authorities in Spain, Poland, and Romania. So be sure to come back at noon where we'll be talking more about the EAFRD. Je m'appelle Julie, j'ai 35 ans et je suis installée comme aromacultrice dans le sud de la France, à Elne, dans le Roussillon. Alors tout d'abord, mon parcours dans l'agriculture a commencé aux côtés de mes parents, eux-mêmes agriculteurs depuis quelques années. Et au début des années 2000, j'ai obtenu donc un BTS agricole en production animale, puisque je voulais m'installer en laitier. Par contre, la crise m'a fait m'orienter dans un autre métier qui me semblait plus sûr, comme le secrétariat administratif. Donc du coup, 12 ans plus tard, j'ai eu envie de revenir à la terre. Surtout que je voyais mes parents s'épanouir dans leur travail, alors que moi, le soir, je me morfondais par rapport à ce que j'avais passé comme journée. J'ai donc tout quitté pour prendre 6000 mètres carrés de fermage dans la propriété familiale et j'ai exploité des herbes aromatiques biologiques. J'étais célibataire et la passion de ce nouveau métier a accaparé tout mon temps, au point du fait d'en arriver à plus pouvoir assurer les commandes par manque de surface exploitable. Donc j'ai rencontré euh, après mon compagnon euh, Alexandre, mon associé, et on a réfléchi ensemble au projet qu'on voulait réaliser aujourd'hui et on a créé donc le GAEC Brin d'Air Bio sur le masque Atela à Elne. Ici, nous avons 3 hectares 80, une surface bien plus, bien plus consistante où on va produire à la fois en plein champ et aussi sous serre, 2000 mètres carrés, avec des plantes aromatiques d'espèces méditerranéennes principalement, comme le thym, le romarin, le laurier, la menthe, le persil et la coriandre. 
Le montage du plan de financement s'est réalisé avec la Banque Populaire du Sud qui a vu rapidement le sérieux de notre projet. Et aussi, je me rappelle le jour où notre conseiller a parlé d'une garantie possible avec la région et l'Europe. Il a donc intégré de nombreux détails de notre projet sous informatique et tous les voyants se sont mis au vert, ce qui signifiait que notre projet était donc éligible. Et indépendamment de la viabilité de notre projet, le conseiller nous a assuré donc que cet outil de garantie qui s'appelle Foster sera un net avantage pour la validation de notre projet. Et c'est à ce moment-là que ça a été le soulagement de savoir que notre caution d'une partie de notre investissement euh, en neuf, comme une chambre froide par exemple pour conserver nos commandes du soir sur le matin, serait garantie sans avoir recours à une demande de caution de mes parents. C'est à ce moment-là aussi que nous est revenue en tête l'idée d'acquérir un robot de désherbage qui s'appelle Oz de chez Nayo, qui va donc nous faire gagner un temps précieux quand, concernant le, le, le désherbage, un temps qu'on va pouvoir consacrer au reste de notre exploitation. Je pourrais ajouter que nous avons aussi obtenu grâce à Foster un taux réduit pour le prêt. Autre chose importante aussi, c'est la possibilité d'intégrer dans le besoin de fonds de roulement l'achat de plants pour nos nouvelles plantations et du paillage ainsi que la location d'une mini pelle pour le terrassement pour l'installation de nos serres. Pour conclure, je dirais que nous sommes ravis de la tournure que prend notre projet. Nos clients de Perpignan et Ringis ont hâte de recevoir nos nouvelles productions. On envisage dans les prochains mois de pouvoir nous dégager deux salaires. Bon, certes, il y a encore du travail pour tout préparer, mais on est à fond à 200% et si vous le souhaitez, on vous donne rendez-vous dans un mois pour nos premières plantations. Je m'appelle Loïc, j'ai 27 ans et je viens de créer à Canédode le Jardin de la Clairette. C'est une unité de fabrication de produits issus de notre exploitation familiale représentée par mes parents qui ont 6 hectares de maraîchage. Moi je suis pâtissier de formation, c'est le métier que j'exerçais pendant près de 7 ans. Malgré tout, j'ai toujours eu l'envie de développer un projet professionnel en lien avec cette activité agricole familiale. Alors reprendre l'exploitation en tant qu'agriculteur, ce n'était vraiment pas mon truc. Et vu l'expérience euh, dans la restauration, j'ai appliqué simplement mon savoir-faire pour me lancer dans une transformation de la production de fruits et légumes de mes parents. Ils avaient déjà initié un début de conserverie et en toute logique, j'ai trouvé opportun de la développer pour répondre à cette demande grandissante. Au début, j'ai commencé dans le petit local familial de 60 mètres carrés, mais très vite il est devenu trop petit. En plus, il demandait une mise aux normes importante. C'est à ce moment-là que j'ai monté le projet d'un local de fabrication. Alors, un, pro, un local aux normes avec un achat CCP et une marche en avant et tout le matériel adapté à l'augmentation des volumes de commandes. Il fallait que je produise en plus grande quantité. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes installés dans un atelier de 300 mètres carrés que nous avons entièrement créé du sol au plafond et où nous produisons nos soupes de légumes, nos veloutés, nos sauces tomates, nos quiches aux légumes, les cakes, les glaces et sorbets. Cette production est en grande majorité vendue en circuit court. Donc financièrement, ce projet représentait 180 000 euros d'aménagement et d'équipement neuf. Les banques demandaient alors des garanties trop lourdes, des cautions familiales et des hypothèques. Alors, lorsque la Banque Populaire m'a parlé de cette garantie Foster qui se mettait tout juste en place, ça a été un véritable soulagement. A partir de là, tout s'est enchaîné très vite. 80% de la garantie de mon prêt ont été pris en charge par la garantie Foster et j'ai cautionné personnellement les 20% restants. Au final, nous avons bénéficié en plus d'un taux privilégié de moins 0,4% et d'une très bonne réactivité de la banque. Estonian Rural Development Programme includes a uh, financial instrument uh, with a budget of 36 million euros. Uh, we are using financial instruments uh, uh, in three measures. 
These are uh, performance of agricultural holdings, processing and marketing, and also diversification. And we have two uh, types of financial instruments, uh, growth loan and long-term investment loan. We already have uh, 82 uh, projects approved. Uh, with these 82 projects, uh, almost half of the money of the financial instruments is in use. The applicants themselves are planning to create 173 new jobs. The Exante assessment was really helpful in mapping the market failure. Uh, what we saw from the uh, Exante assessment is that uh, SMEs, also starting enterprises, uh, certain sectors have difficulties uh, obtaining loans. Also rural enterprises and agriculture sector don't have uh, sufficient uh, guarantees and there are no long-term uh, loans available on the market. Rural Development Foundation is a financial intermediary. We have uh, provided different financial services uh, to rural areas more than 20 years. Uh, we are self-sufficient organizations, but we are state-owned. The type of projects we are invest to are, are modernized production, improve resource efficiency, and of course, uh, uh, increase competitiveness. Financial instruments is not free money. It means responsibility. It has to be paid back, but it also uh, results in higher quality projects. 90% of beneficiaries are micro-enterprises but we are especially focusing on young farmers, producer groups and also startups. We have uh, invested now more than 80 projects from uh, windmills to uh, bakeries, from CNC metal cutting machines into coat farming. So it's a wide variety of businesses. We heard about it from uh, Estonia Rural Development uh, Foundation uh, when they came to introduce their plans for the future. So it was a great opportunity for us. The loan uh, gave us opportunity to buy new technology like hay drying uh, machine, uh, milking station and uh, dairy equ equipment. This uh, milking station is uh, most advanced in Estonia. The technology made us more efficient. We only have two workers. Before Estonia had to import uh, goat milk, but now we can say, uh, sell uh, raw and pasteurized uh, goat milk all over Estonia. A uh, financial instrument is uh, more beneficial in three ways. It uh, helps to lower the pressure on grants, where the demand is high but the resources are limited. Uh, secondly, it's uh, more flexible. Uh, it uh, enables farmers to apply for a loan whenever it is needed. It also enables uh, uh, to target uh, wider range of uh, enterprises and thirdly uh, it forces farmers uh, to think uh, their business plan and uh, risks more for investments financed by loans are more carefully calculated and also they can lead to more efficient uh, investments. Trades can be used as a tool for policy making. For example in the rural areas when we have shortage of uh, women entrepreneurs. We can use uh, subsidized interest to promote uh, women entrepreneurship. At first uh, when we started to negotiate with the uh, banks we had several de declines because uh, we are young, we have no experience, no history uh, and uh, we had to prove that our business plan is good. When we applied for the loan, there was less red tape because we only have had to apply once uh, to one place. We have uh, made loan decisions around 18 million at the moment, but it has also generated another 18 million from the commercial banks. So it means it's a double money for those projects. Good thing about uh, loans is that the money is coming back and you can use it again and again. For example, our Foundation's 36 million euro budget 
is used for investments in rural area in amount of 800 million euros in the last 20 years. We have long-term contact with the banks and in a way banks are the best promoters of financial instruments. If they don't want to make a loan deal with a farmer, they send the farmer to us and we'll try to find the best solution for them. Welcome back from the coffee break. I hope you all were able to make some nice coffee, some nice snacks, wherever you are, spread all over Europe and indeed the world, I think. Um, we're now going to move on to looking at the future, but first we're gonna get the poll results of that poll that you guys answered just before the break. Uh, so the question, of course, was after hearing the experiences of the Greek managing authorities, what do you think the key for success is? And, uh, I can't, here we go, okay. So the simplified rules is what you guys really thought would be uh, the seemingly the most helpful based on the examples that we heard from Greece. And then it looks like second place there is the possibility to combine grant and FI combinations, which is one of the things we were talking about in the Q&A panel. Uh, so that's very interesting. I wonder if the uh, Greek authorities agree. I wonder if this was the takeaway message they were, were trying to put forward, but it seems pretty consistent with what they were saying. Uh, so thanks for that. So as I mentioned, we're now gonna be talking about the future of the EAFRD financial instruments. Um, we're really now looking ahead uh, and to seeing lessons from the past, obviously, and how they can be applied to the future. So first, uh, we're going to hear about what's happened in 2014 to 2020 and their importance for the future CAP strategic plans. I'd like to introduce Silvia Michelini, Director for Rural Development at the European Commission's Directorate General for uh, Agriculture and Rural Development. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dear Commissioner, dear Minister Livanos, Vice President of EIB, Kettle Thompson, Vice President of Copa Cogeca, Pofferi, dear managing authorities, managers, experts from the FRD authorities, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Today, as a director responsible for the FRD financial instruments, I feel privileged to have the opportunity to summarize our achievements in this specialized and, at first sight, rather complex field. A field which, however, brings benefits and advantages for our farmers and rural businesses that we demonstrated also today with the case of Greece. We have all heard various numbers and figures in the morning speeches, and we will situate them in a broader context and perspective later in my intervention. First of all, let's have a look at the summary of success in this period. It is my pleasure to finally announce as an outcome of more than seven years of work that we managed to achieve what we promised in the beginning of the programming period, namely to double the funding through our financial instruments. In fact, I can say that we more than doubled it. At this moment, 645 million euros of EFRD resources are programmed for financial instruments and the total public support is 848 million euros. Our expectation is that we will approach 2 billion euros of total loans under all our financial instruments by 2025 when the eligibility period ends. And thanks to you, our managing authorities and your commitment, and thanks also to the effort together with EFID from our side, together with EIB, in raising our knowledge and awareness and your knowledge and awareness on the subject. We achieved much more than anyone expected. Success in the context of financial instruments, however, is not measured only by the volume of resources programmed for it. It is a function of impacts, leverage, benefits for those deciding to take loans, better design products, enriching the offer on the market. It's about efficient reuse of resources, stimulation of programs deliveries and grant support and so on. There is plenty attached to the figure I mentioned, which I will also share with you further today. But let me start from the beginning. In 2007-2013, in, uh, um, so in the pre previous programming period, we saw the first attempt of our managing authorities to go forward with financial instruments and it was not easy. We had only few authorities from seven member states making an effort to have financial instruments most driven by the financial crisis. Many of these attempts ended up unsuccessfully in the form of sleeping funds or not making a difference on the ground for various reasons. The overall results were not promising. The performance was lacking. Programmed EFRD money amounted to a meager 286 million euros. And there was no leverage for two major reasons. Our financial instruments could only be used in combination with grants and products were generic, with funds transferred to already existing schemes bringing no further benefit to the farmers and not supporting risk-prone projects with lack of risk-sharing loans or portfolios guarantees and with no attempts to cover innovation. We reflected on the challenges and we became proactive and we undertook several steps that changed the game for everyone. We aligned our rules to those of the cohesion funds as they were more advanced and based on experience. That's how we came to a common understanding between all of us operating under shared management. We signed a memorandum of understanding with the EIB 
that set up our new bilateral relationship. It had the expected impact on the way we work and cooperate, and I'm pleased to say, in a very positive way. You heard today more about our joint work from the Vice President of EIB, Ketel Thompson. We joined FICOMPAS from the start and steadily began developing content, studies, activities to help our managing authorities. Let me mention just our targeting coaching and last year's national reports as successful examples. We had the EIF with us as well after the entry into the specific world of agriculture and farm finances, which before 2014 was not part of their priorities. We lifted the restrictions on program modifications linked to the financial instruments to ensure that the programming process does not impede their setup and implementation. We opened up the possibilities beyond the simple combination with grants, allowing managing authorities to have their own specific and targeted financial instruments with a variety of implementation options. We further changed the EU legislation to open up for working capital finance ancillary to investments. For the first time in the history of the common agricultural policy, support for rural development. And after the COVID-19 pandemic, to allow it as a standalone finance for SMEs. We created and implemented new initiative for farmers, adding fresh resources from outside the CAP. Together with EIB or the Juncker Plan, such as the EFRD FC initiative or the 1 billion euro one uh, young farmer initiative. And equally important, we remain transparent towards you, our managing authorities, and we try to share content, analysis and ideas at our numerous occasions, bilateral meetings, coaching sessions, or at the 28 fee compass conferences we have had so far. We also supported you in the administration involved in setting up financial instruments, ensuring consistency with EU rules. Overall, we succeeded in an area which in 2007-2013 was not our best uh, performance in the policy implementation. And we did that with your commitment and the support from EIB advisory department FICOMPAS and also thanks to the efforts of my team in DG Agri working on financial instruments. Moving now on the policy side of financial instruments. This morning, Commissioner Wojciechowski stressed the new priorities of the future common agricultural policy and underlined in his speech that we need to start looking into the environmental friendly investments and activities. That is more urgent than ever, also for the agricultural sector, to tackle climate change, to go the extra mile in the green and digital transition. Financial instruments, ladies and gentlemen, are one of the tools that can contribute to the transformation we are all aiming for. They can, by no doubt, and as we saw in the video with the Greek farmers, finance at preferential conditions farms and businesses willing to change and become sustainable in the medium to long run. The scale of investment is not that important, but rather is impact on the environment, on the farm business model and the legacy for the next generations. Digital solutions are widely accessible in all agricultural sectors and productions. Green practices are gaining speed and are being disseminated via various channels, including our rural and national networks, the EIP, the advisory services, agricultural fairs, and, other, uh, and also often between farmers when sharing experience. We can lead the new CAP and the delivery of the CAP to a new momentum where we can not only spend more through financial instruments and attract more resources, 
but we can even try to change the way all financial players in a given country or region look at agriculture and, financial, and finance agriculture. We have to be ambitious and we need to aim high. This is why I confirm our position that we would like to see financial instruments implemented across Europe and where financial needs are well documented. A plea that Mr. Linz, the chair of Comagri in the European Parliament, voiced this morning as well. We have to profit from it and we have to continue to be proactive. Solutions are available for anyone, those with experience and those without. We can also help bilaterally and with FICOMPAS. We only need your decision making and understanding that the new common agricultural policy strategic plans can be richer from a policy delivery point of view if financial instruments are part of them. And our last year national reports evaluating your financial markets and needs show that a lot more can be done. And that the current financial markets, despite the availability of liquidity, are not favoring agriculture. We are also faced with a scenario where inflation, costs and interest rates may rise and this will put further strain on the investment behaviour of our farmers. Financial instruments can be employed to mitigate these developments. Moving now to the current state of play. Where are we today and what has happened over the last year since our financial instruments entered into the market? and most of them became operational. I would like to start first with the fact that almost all our financial instruments are now up and running, as said this morning, and that the COVID-19 pandemic is no longer an obstacle as it was earlier in the beginning of 2020, during the first wave of the pandemic. Investments are now back, farmers develop projects and we see a growing level of support. Economies are yet to recover, but the positive trend is visible. In 2020, the actual payments made to final beneficiaries have doubled compared to year 2019 and reached 200, more than 200 million euros, of which 150 million euros is from EFRD. In total, 25 financial instruments paid money to farmers and businesses with seven more than in 2019. And our financial instruments target largely agricultural producers. In 2021, as we have seen this morning, we saw Greece accelerating its support. And a few days ago, Lithuania started accepting project proposals under its new financial instruments. The last one expected to be operational is the loan fund of Bulgaria, where the first intermediary, inter intermediary body was selected some time ago. But operations will be launched at the end of this year or early next year. The performance results of the financial instruments measured through the leverage are promising. We have an average leverage of 1.7 for loan funds and 5.5 for guarantee funds. This means in financial terms that overall, for both loan and guarantees fund together, more than 200 million euros RDP contribution generated 540 million euros paid to or for the benefit of financial recipient. A significant difference uh, with the 2007-2013 period where such figures were unthinkable as already outlined earlier. If the current implementation trend remains the same, we can easily say that by the end of next year, we will create more than 1 billion euro total amount of loans paid to final beneficiaries. Let's have a look at the number of final recipient support. It increases more than three times from 1,370 in 2019 to more than 4,400 by the end of 2020. The bulk of the recipients is made up of 3,000 
800, 3,900, and even more microenterprises, including individual and family farms, which account for 90% of all final, final recipients. This is a clear indication that even when our financial instruments are not restricted by farm or loan sizes, they are mostly demanded and creating advantages for smaller farms, which are the most constrained group of the financial market. By the end of 2020, in total, more than 4,800 loan and or guarantee contracts were signed. Looking at the instruments which are up and running, the share of guarantee instruments increased to 54% of all EFRD commitments by the um, end of 2020. With the evolving nature of the guarantee funds, it is likely this trend will continue in the future. Importantly, uh, financial instruments are reaching all agricultural producers, from cereals, bovine, dairy, fruit and vegetables, vegetables including winemakers. About 88% of all financed projects belong to the primary agricultural sector. Projects linked to field crops cover one-third of all provided loans and guarantees, around 34%, while those in the dairy sector amount to 15%. This diversity in the demand for support from financial instruments, combined with the permanently growing number of farmers demanding support, is yet another piece of evidence that financial instruments can deliver. They are a multi-objective type of support, even if the majority of all the FRD commitments are concentrated in the two main focus areas, improving economic performance of all farms and generational renewal. Financial instruments contribute to the diversification of rural areas and rural businesses, renewable energy, fostering local development. I do believe that in the future, financial instruments will strongly contribute also, as was mentioned this morning, to the long-term vision for rural areas. The last empirical evidence I want to bring relates to the response to the pandemic. In April 2020, we passed legal changes allowing standalone working capital finance to be given through financial instruments to SMEs in difficulties. These new options were quickly taken by 13 rural development programs by eight member states. A firm statement that financial instruments can also contribute to risk management and crisis situation in the future, especially if products are well designed. So, where are we heading to? The results I just presented are promising and more than initially expected. However, we should not stop here. We should make an effort to achieve an even greater impact, financial, economic, environmental. We recently launched a survey among all the FRD managing authorities to see what they think of financial instruments, what is their experience and intentions on what shall we focus our technical assistance fee compass and which areas deserve attention. So far, we received answers from 10 national and 20 regional, man 20 regional managing authorities. I invite those who have not yet responded to do so in the coming days, as we will need your contribution. The policy reflection of our managing authorities is astonishingly clear. Young farmers are smaller farms, and also smaller farms are the main target groups we need to address. About half of those who responded already started preparatory work on financial instruments under the CAP strategic plans. Many have taken part in our targeted coaching, also had also internal discussions, and about 60% have talked to their stakeholders. All these numbers are very promising. And while it is clear that we will not see financial instruments everywhere from the offset, many have taken the opposite road and now are ready to continue their instruments to the new program in period and set up also new ones. We still have time until 2025 to exhaust the resources under the current ones, 
that new products could also be launched with the new budget under the CAP plans. What type, under which conditions, for whom, when and why, remains the responsibility of each managing authority. From the survey, we see a growing interest in all combination options between grants and financial instruments, as well as on capital rebates linked to the achievement of predefined targets. We will make an effort to focus on that as well. And Bruno Robino, head of FICOMPAS, will further outline some interesting areas for analytical work based on the survey I just mentioned. We will continue supporting you in the efforts to set up and develop financial instruments. We already had 39 coaching cases with some managing authorities using the service twice, at present being delivered to Slovenia, Greece and Normandy region in France. We already gave more than 170 legal interpretations on the subjects, of which 45 in 2021 alone. And as of next year, we will facilitate the exchange of information by placing all these into CIRCA and making it visible to every interested member state. We now expect your CAP strategic plans, as my commissioner underlined this morning. GEOABs in the G agriculture are established for each member state and they've been working closely with their counterparts, assisting in the efforts to prepare submission of the strategic plans by the deadline, 1st of January 2022. Hopefully with many proposals relating to financial instruments to support our CAP objectives. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Sylvia. And if you guys at home have any questions for Sylvia about her presentation, you can ask them later. She'll be joining us for the panel, and you can type in your questions on the platform. I can ask them to her later. But first, before that panel, we're going to hear from three EAFRD managing authorities who will share their experiences with financial instruments. We're going to be going remote to uh, Spain, Poland, and Romania. Let's start with Spain. We're first going to hear from Carolina Gutierrez Anso Tegui, Deputy Director of Rural Development at the Spanish Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for good morning, everyone. Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting the Spanish ministry to this conference and to let us present our experience. Let me change to Spanish, then I can be more precise with my presentation. Experience, but uh, I would like to stress some good ideas. So. Um, so, how would I say that the success of the use of these financial instruments? I would like to underline two concepts. On the one hand, the absolute coordination and alignment between all the parties involved in the centralized management financial instrument with the participation on one hand of the Ministry of Agriculture together with SAECA, uh, the Sociedad Anónima Estatal de Caución Agraria, with the management authorities of the rural development programs and the financial institutions with whom we have uh, negotiated. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the success is due because we are offering uh, uh, precisely products that the sector was demanding, offering loans uh, for productive investments and working capital on favorable terms uh, and to profiles that, that needed them. But how was the path until we got to this centralized management financial instrument? The path hasn't been simple, but it has been very satisfactory. In the Ministry of Agriculture, um, we saw the opportunity that opened up in the, uh, with the European regulation to use uh, financial instruments as an alternative tool to subsidies for the agri-food sector. 
That's the reason why we propose the regional managing authorities uh, this instrument uh, that can be defined in our case to, as a um, um, several specific uh, funds uh, from the contribution of the regional development program, where each fund guarantees the loan loans uh, corresponding to its territory. And for more details, I can explain our product. These specific funds offer 80% credit risk coverage for each loan with a maximum limit of the total portfolio of 20% for each financial institution. So once we've gone beyond this 20% of the risk in the total portfolio, uh, the financial entities will assume the entire risk. Uh, what's the situation in Spain? Three regions. Uh, um, are in this centralized instrument, Castilla Leon, Extremadura, and Galicia. And uh, we will have a fourth region, Asturias. And I have to underline a very important uh, fact. Uh, only in three years, uh, we've guaranteed uh, more than 700 loans uh, uh, for a total amount of um, around 115 million euros. Uh, we took advantage of uh, the opportunity given uh, when offering loans for COVID, and we've uh, signed more than 165 uh, loans uh, with a coverage around 10 million euros. Uh, I'll also like to underline a very important fact. Uh, the instru instrument of uh, centralized management uh, is helping to support young and small farms. So I think that has been uh, the success of the instrument in Spain. Obviously, uh, also other agri-food companies um, to the date. Uh, there hasn't been any default, uh, and therefore we are very satisfied. If you allow me, I will explain uh, how we see the following period. Uh, What's our vision from Spain for that strategic plan of the CAP? And what are the forecasts, which are very positive? As I said, until now, we've only had three or four regions in the uh, instrument. But with that perspective, we have identified that of the 17th region in Spain, uh, Several are interested in developing the instrument, 12 of the 17 uh, regions, uh, and the majority expect uh, to be included in this centralized instrument. So we believe that the next period would be a fantastic opportunity to keep uh, giving support uh, to these instruments. Uh, what are the uh, new elements for the next uh, period? Uh, to include uh, the new regulations uh, um, in terms of combining grant uh, and financial instrument in a single operation. And we are exploring the possibility of using the instruments in new types of intervention, uh, such as uh, uh, cooperation, uh, for example, for leader projects, so we are receiving consultations and intentions of using. And another tool is uh, to use for uh, purchasing land for young people. And we'd also like to make combinations of grant and instrument in a single transaction. We're also working on uh, um, having more long-term uh, loans. Uh, uh, the period should be a little bit longer of repayment. And obviously, these instruments uh, can be used uh, as it has been shown by the pandemic. These instruments uh, uh, should uh, cover exceptional situations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if, in adverse weather conditions, episodic diseases, temporary market situations, and we are exploring these uh, uh, conditions. In the case of Spain and from uh, the Spanish administration, uh, 
We hope for the next period, for the next strategic plan of the CAP, we hope to be able to give all the support to our farmers through this new tool. Thank you very much. And I hope that our experience is useful for this conference. Thanks a lot, Carolina. That's particularly interesting to hear about what made financial instruments in the current programming period. Let's go to Poland next. I'll introduce Isabella Stanczak, Chief Specialist of the Technical Assistance and Promotion Department at the Polish Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Welcome, Isabella. So, Isabella, we know that you have implemented also a successful instrument in the current programming period. What was the most important element that helped design that successful FI? Um, welcome from Poland and the most, uh, I think the most important element that uh, helped us design a financial uh, instrument was an assessment of uh, real financial needs uh, in a field of uh, agriculture. First step uh, to work on financial instruments was um, the exam evaluation. And the main purpose of this evaluation was um, to uh, assess the supply and demand uh, for financing and recipients uh, under um, covered by uh, Polish Rural Development Program. Uh, I mean farms and um, agri-food processing enterprises and to identify needs not covered by rural development program. Uh, it was very important uh, to design a financial instrument that should cover the financing gaps in areas where the final uh, recipients and uh, given uh, type of investment were not eligible for a grant. Uh, a second goal was proposing an investment strategy. Uh, the study um, showed us uh, that the main obstacle to access the finance uh, for farms and um, agri-food uh, processing plant were high loan uh, collateral cost, I mean uh, security cost. Uh, and um, the assessment uh, that uh, the, and the financial gap that the entire agriculture uh, sector, um, including farms and food processing enterprises, needs um, more than 9 billion zloty. It's more than um, 2 billion euro uh, and according um, according the assessment and uh, bank opinion uh, the best uh, answer for uh, that identified problem problems was the guarantee instrument and the guarantee instrument uh, was implemented as a pilot program uh, as a result of um, the Exante uh, assessment, our Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development as the managing authority uh, with cooperation with uh, our um, implementing body, uh, which is Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego, uh, they established a National Agricultural Guarantee Fund. The aim of this fund is to support farms and agri-food processing enterprises in accessing financial uh, financing by providing guarantees. And to, uh, so, to sum up, I think that the good diagnosis was the main element in process uh, of designing a successful financing um, financial instrument. Uh, how you. did, um, I'm curious, how did farmers react to the implementation of your FI? Did you mm -hmm. receive feedback from them? Uh, yes, of course, we received uh, feedback uh, from them. As I said, uh, the, um, the financial uh, instruments are implemented as a pilot program. Uh, but of course, we uh, cooperate uh, with uh, the Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego and we receive uh, some information from the bank. Uh, from the reports uh, on implementation progress uh, we received, it can be concluded uh, that the interest uh, in financial instrument in form of guarantee is constantly growing. So it's uh, very good information. Mm, but it's 
in, it's important um, to say that shortly after the implementation um, started in 2019, our ministry faced uh, to the challenge related to outbreak of uh, COVID-19, which causes that our recipients um, had problems related to maintaining financial, uh, financial liquidity. So uh, the new situation made it necessary um, uh, to ensure access uh, to the working capital loans uh, due to the problems with maintaining financial liquidity. So um, the bank's offer had to be changed. And uh, first, the COVID-19 interest rate subsidies have been introduced. Second, the obligation uh, to combine working capital loan uh, loans with investment activities had, had been abolished. And the second, uh, the budget for financial instrument uh, had been increased by more than 80 million slot. It mean um, it's about it's more than 80 million euro. As a result, um, thousands uh, of farmers and agriculture, um, agri-food enterprises have used the working capital loans to fill the liquidity gap caused by the pandemic. Uh, this solution is very popular. And um, currently, uh, we have more than 50% of um, the found uh, dedicated to financial instruments uh, that are contracted. And uh, more than uh, 4,000 uh, recipients receive the guarantees. So it's good information. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So let's go to Romania next. We have with us from Romania, Adela Stefan, Director of the Methodology Coordination Monitoring and Evaluation Directorate within the Managing Authority of the Rural Development Program at Romania's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. So Adela, in Romania, you guys have a long experience with financial instruments. You actually implemented a guarantee fund in the 2007 to 2013 programming period and a loan fund in the current one. So could you name three key recommendations to other EAFRD managing authorities who are interested in using financial instruments in their CAP strategic plans? And, and I'm wondering how important do you think are the relationships of the managing authority with the fund manager? Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, giving me the uh, possibility to share our experience with uh, other managing authorities. Indeed, uh, in Romania, we started with the implementation of uh, financial instruments in 2008 and also continued uh, in the current uh, programming period. Uh, so, uh, our experience actually covered uh, two uh, programming periods with uh, two different set of rules and also implementing uh, two different uh, financial uh, instruments. Uh, concerning your question, if I have to, uh, to name three recommendations, um, I would start by uh, uh, saying that uh, setting up a financial instrument, it's uh, not a speedy process. At least um, it wasn't in our case. Uh, so the, the managing authorities that uh, decide to uh, implement financial uh, instruments uh, need to, to have uh, patience. Um, that's why uh, in Romania we uh, started the preparatory work uh, for uh, setting up financial instruments uh, at the beginning of the programming period uh, or in the first years. Um, another recommendation uh, would be uh, to uh, pay attention to the communication with the stakeholders and the potential beneficiaries in order to, to raise uh, awareness among them about the possibilities uh, offered through financial instruments, um, even more so uh, in case of implementing for the first time uh, financial uh, instrument. 
Uh, based on our experience, uh, we uh, realized that uh, our farmers, but not only, in general, all the beneficiaries of the program uh, were used with uh, grant support when um, deciding to, to realize investments on the EFRD. Uh, another very important uh, aspect, in my opinion, is also the capacity building, uh, both at the level of the managing authority and also the paying agency. Uh, it is true that uh, the implementation of the financial instruments in most cases is uh, done uh, through the fund manager and the financial intermediaries. Uh, but I think that um, it is important for a successful implementation to, to have people in the administration uh, that uh, understand uh, both the fund-specific rules uh, and, uh, as we all know, uh, in case of EFRD, we had a very uh, detailed and um, specific eligibility rules. But also, of course, they need to, to understand and apply the uh, financial instrument uh, approach, uh, as financial instruments have their uh, particularities uh, against uh, grants. Uh, replying to the second part of uh, your question, um, of course, uh, very good uh, cooperation with uh, uh, the fund manager is uh, important in order to, uh, to ensure the proper management and monitoring of the instrument. Uh, that's why uh, we uh, um, in Romania started uh, at uh, the uh, from the first stages of uh, implementation of the financial instrument, uh, very intensive discussions with uh, the fund manager and the paying agency, which is also a part of the system, and also with the financial intermediaries. Um, we consulted, of course, uh, DG Agri in order to clarify all the technical details. Um, and to ensure um, a smooth implementation throughout uh, the entire period, uh, the programming period. So, Adela, looking to the future, have you already started any preparations for using financial instruments in the CAP strategic plan? In our case, uh, we decided to wait for the moment uh, to postpone the, um, the preparatory work considering that uh, we have uh, up to four full years of uh, implementation of the current uh, financial instrument. And uh, this is because uh, we are presently covering through our uh, instrument um, uh, support for investments in uh, agriculture, in uh, processing, uh, also in non-agricultural sector. Uh, as well as uh, working capital under the condition of uh, Regulation 1305. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think uh, it's important to also analyze the possibilities uh, we have to uh, use the current revolving resources after the end of the eligibility uh, of uh, the Rural Development Program. Uh, in order to take full benefit of the uh, functioning, functioning principles of the financial instruments. Uh, but of course, uh, we are very interested uh, in assessing and um, um, analyzing the possibilities, the new possibilities, the uh, uh, strategic plan regulation offers. And I'm referring here to, um, to the financing of uh, standalone uh, working capital, uh, maybe also to the um, possibility of um, uh, introducing uh, financial instruments under the uh, risk management intervention, uh, or the continuation of the current financial instruments uh, in the strategic plans. Uh, from this perspective, I think that uh, this type of events, uh, as well as the um, supporting the documents and the technical assistance, uh, are very useful in uh, helping, uh, helping member states uh, to identify the appropriate uh, form of support and, or mix of support for, uh, for their beneficiaries. Great. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks so much to all three of our managing authority representatives. I think that's some really invaluable 
on the ground experience for what's been successful so far. So next, we're going to hear about the European Investment Fund managed EAFRD financial instruments and the options for the future. I'd like to introduce Liliana Rodion, Mandate Manager for Northern and Central and Eastern Europe for the European Investment Fund. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am um, very happy to be once again part of the FICOMPAS uh, conference where experiences, best practices and new ideas in the field of agriculture are, are shared. Last time the conference was held in Bucharest and the setting was completely different. But challenging times means that we must adapt to new forms of virtual communication. So here we are in front of you, this time on your screen. I hope uh, our intervention is just as conducive to successfully conveying our messages as it would be in a physical meeting. I would like to say, I would like to start by saying a few words on the European Investment Fund and our role. We are a European institution located at the heart of Europe with a mission to improve access to finance for European SMEs, effectively to support their growth and strengthen their competitiveness, something that is of even greater importance during the current difficult economic context. We provide risk um, financing to stimulate entrepreneurship and innovation in Europe by offering a wide range of targeted products to support SMEs and mid-caps, ranging from microfinance to social and social finance to venture capital and guarantees. Although this, is a, this uh, statement is a well-known fact by now, I think we can't say it enough though. Entrepreneurs are the backbone of the, of the European economy and the key focal point for EU policy. 99.8% of enterprises in Europe are SMEs. Therefore, this is where EIF can and is creating an impact. As just mentioned, we help, the, we help improve the funding environment for businesses. But as the theme of this conference is agriculture, I would like to focus here on this sector. So what do we do concretely? We provide risk sharing financial instruments to address a symmetry of information, which is often recognized as a key problem in financing farmers. Small businesses are often too small to have accounting and business records. And this makes it difficult for banks to assess their risk. Similarly, highly innovative small businesses may be too disruptive for banks or funds to assess risk and potential, as they might, la might lack benchmark data or expertise. We also provide capital relief through our instruments, which is particularly relevant in economies with low bank capital adequacy ratio, ratios that lead to a scarcity of capital and a decline in lending to higher risk small agribusinesses. Furthermore, we are able to provide funding through EU programs and our own capital resources where smaller banks specialized in agriculture can face liquidity issues. EIF has the ability and the drive to support farmers and agribusinesses under all conditions, including under the ongoing COVID-19 crisis with financial solutions all around Europe. And how do we achieve all this? Through our unique approach. We do not invest or lend directly. We are not a bank. We use financial instruments to address gaps, foster sustainability, multiply resources, and in doing so, improve access to finance. I would like to talk a bit more about our financial agri-instruments risk-sharing products. During 2014-2020 programming period, EIF designed dedicated financial instruments to support the agri-sector, not only to complement the existing grant schemes, but also to introduce new solutions which would increase the supply of finance. Through a grant, through a grant scheme, one year of public resources is equal to one year of grant. Whereas, through the risk sharing instruments, we have one year of public resources that can be leveraged to five euros, which is five times better, five times more funding to farmers and agribusinesses. Therefore, on one hand, our equity investments help kickstart ecosystems and attract other investors to back funds investing in small businesses. And on the other hand, our loan guarantees provide protection against expected losses, 
incentivizing lending at better terms and to small businesses that would otherwise be too risky. Furthermore, a very important feature of the financial instruments is that the resources committed to them are of a revolving nature, meaning that the resources return to the managing authority after repayment from the client to be used for a similar purpose. So what are the main benefits of our unique approach? Well, first, we are capable of multiplying resources. We design financial instruments that share risk with banks and funds. As a result, we are increasing the overall supply of finance for small businesses. Second, we are targeting funding gaps. We help our investors support new segments and target specific gaps at the European, national and local level. And third, <coughs> we are nurturing ecosystems. We partner with established and new providers of equity and debt financing, investment in, uh, fi private investors, national governments, local MPIs, in order to increase the number of local partners, lending and investing in small businesses in all sectors. As a European organization, we envisage new products that must meet today the EU targets of tomorrow. As such, in addition to, in addition to our efforts to facilitate finance to all SMEs, we added three more crucial thematic focuses in order to have a greater impact in our work and to align with the invest EU regulation and with the Paris Agreement. The first uh, new thematic focus is innovation. Innovation across crucial sectors such as life sciences, health and digital, digital transformation. Second focus, very important one, social impact, skills and human capital. This aims at promoting social inclusion, diversity and well-being, nurturing impact and focusing on skills, education, as well as cultural and creative sectors. And the third thematic focus, also of great importance in the current context, sustainability and green, uh, green transformation. The aim is to stimulate sustainable industries, products and services, as well as energy efficiency and renewable energy endeavors, and thus to support SMEs in their green transformation. Agriculture will be a strategic horizontal sector, playing a key role, especially considering its direct link to sustainability and green transformation. As I mentioned earlier, our solutions multiply resources. We design debt financial instruments that share risk facing the financial financing needs of EU agriculture sectors. These solutions encourage lending and investment in riskier small businesses and, as a result, increase the supply of finance. How do we define what is more suitable for the market? Well, there are great needs, but there are also limitations. The European agri-sector, in some countries or regions more than in others, needs to grow, to expand, to modernize and to become more innovative and of course to adapt to, cl to the climate changes and promote biodiversity. But the current environment, challenged by a fast-growing global population, limited natural resources and the recent COVID-19 crisis, to name just a few, created hurdles for the European agribusinesses and farmers in their attempts to fulfill these needs. Obstacles such as low and volatile economic margins, lack of credit history or financial data, especially on innovative investments or new production practices, lack of assets that can be used as collateral and lack of equity capital too, all these are limiting their access to finance that they need in order to become more resilient and competitive. Um, our strategy when we design that financial instrument for agriculture is to accomplish three main goals. First, to facilitate access to finance at better conditions for the final beneficiaries of the agricultural sectors by sharing the credit risk with financial intermediaries and by limiting the level of collateral required as well as the interest rate. Second, to create a real impact on the market by supporting particular projects relating to the upscaling, the creation of added value and the transformation of production systems. Third, to facilitate complementarity with grants. In the new programming period, we aim to expand even further our offer and activity for financial instruments supported by EFRD or other public resources. Our, our objectives, in addition to satisfying all four thematic areas that I mentioned before, are to improve competitiveness 
by strengthening the position of farmers in the supply chain and boost the competitiveness of the agri sector, agri food sector. To address environmental and climate uh, objectives on supporting investment on biodiversity, water and air quality, less greenhouse gas emissions, alternative ways of energy, and to support employment and create new jobs. Income and diversification for, for income diversification for farmers, upgrade assets that no longer meet international best practices, innovation, investments to improve working condition, educational reception and farm tourism. Today, we are managing nine specialized fund, funds in six countries with resources amounting to more than 1.1 billion euros from national AFRD and FC funds. Thanks to these funds, we expect to generate a total of more than 3.4 billion euros of lending to the European agribusinesses and farmers. In addition to the decentralized financial instrument mentioned before, as of today, EIF has achieved to provide to the agricultural sectors on a pan-European basis through our central instruments such as COSME, INOFIN and SIP, more than 370,000 agri-loans amounting to around 22 billion euros to 280,000 SMEs. Big numbers, right? But we are still aiming for more as the financing market gap in the agri-sector is still far from being covered. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Liliana. Uh, very interesting to see how some of that is working in practice. Uh, so next, we're going to hear about technical support for developing CAP financial instruments. We're going to hear about that from Bruno Robino, head of FI Compass at the European Investment Bank. Thank you, Dave. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm realizing that uh, mine is the last presentation of today, so I will try to be concise. Uh, let me start with the words of uh, Vice President Thompson, who said that Fee Compass has provided an important contribution to the adoption and development of EIFRD financial instruments. But how that uh, has been possible? Indeed, it is a fact that uh, since 2016, FICOMPAS has organized more than 30 events divided into flagship events and thematic or country-specific events, gathering more than 4,200 participants. In terms of uh, guidance material, working hand-in-hand -hand with the colleagues of DG Agri, FICOMPAS has published some 20 documents related to agriculture eight of which in the form of market studies aim at promoting financial instruments and 11 case studies on EIFRD financial instruments to be used as a source of inspiration, some of which include a video version of the case study. When it comes to studies, I would like to highlight uh, the importance um, of uh, uh, one uh, FICOMPAS uh, study produced last year, uh, the study on, fin on financial needs in the agriculture and agri-food sector in 24 EU member states, which is based, among other, on the feedback of 7,600 farmers and 2,200 agri-food companies across the EU. The aim of the study is divided uh, in 24 uh, country-specific report is to go through the main challenges on access to finance faced by agriculture in one hand and by agri-food sector on the other hand. The message here is not only to underline the significant aggregate financing gap for agriculture and agri-food sector, but to inform managing authorities that are preparing their CAP strategic plan that the country reports published could be a good source of information to justify programming of financial instruments in the coming period. The country reports are available on the FICOMPAS page under the library tab. Under the so-called EIFRD FC initiative launched in 2016, a number of managing authorities benefited from a package of services on the FICOMPAS to promote 
combination of EIFRD resources with FC, the so-called Juncker Plan resources, taking advantage of EIF expertise as a manager. The initiative offered a feasibility study to analyze the demand and supply of financial instruments and recommendation regarding investment strategies and progress. Targeted coaching session to managing authorities in the form of training session explaining the feature behind financial instruments and their potential benefits. And finally, the design and implementation support from the European Investment Fund. The initiative promoted through FICOMPAS has supported several managing authorities in setting up financial instruments, eventually generating a total market impact of approximately 1 billion euro. Another FICOMPAS uh, initiative launched last October together with DG Agri is a survey among EIFRD managing authority, which by the way is still ongoing. So as uh, Director Michelini said, if you are representing a managing authority, please reply to the survey. Some 30 managing authorities already reacted to the survey and I would like to take a moment to give you a flavor of the pre preliminary results of the survey. At this stage, respondent indicated that indeed more than one third of the enterprise active in agriculture and agri food uh, struggle to get access to finance. By the same token, uh, respondents have the feeling that young farmers and micro small farms are the ones which are suffering more when it comes to access to credit should not come uh, as a surprise that too high collaterals and relatively short loans maturities are two of the major issues affecting availability of finance through the banking system. To the question on which topics should FICOMPAS focus in view of the new programming period, respondent replied that the new CAP legislation has to be considered among the priority topics, but also financial instruments in combination with grants is definitely a great, of great interest. And as a part of the same topic, I would also include capital rebates, which is a form of combining financial instruments with grants. Financial instruments dedicated to young farmers, to rural infrastructure and to green investments were also indicated by respondents as important topics. Another noticeable result of the survey is the answer to the question related new financial instruments, where respondents uh, interestingly uh, indicated microfinance, crowdfunding and equity should be further explored in the future. In terms of topics, or better, of new topics on which FICOMPAS should focus on, in carrying out uh, new studies, managing authorities reported several subjects, ranging from access to finance for young farmers, the impact of the pandemic on farmers' income and access to finance, and also financial needs to facilitate digital technologies at farm level all very relevant topics. But talking about the future, how will the future technical support on the FICOMPAS look like? Well, given the experience accumulated so far and the demand for this type of support, FICOMPAS is planning to continue to play a raising awareness role as well as to provide services to build the technical capacity of who or who is or will be in charge of financial instruments. Taking stock of the results of the survey, it is expected that we will continue in carrying out studies on topics of relevance for EIFRD financial instruments, alongside with the production and publication of guidance material in the form of case studies, videos, and brochures. Finally, and here again, it will be a function of the appetite of the managing authorities for this type of services. We do expect that targeted coaching services will continue, addressing on a bespoke basis specific needs of managing authorities. Talking about targeted coaching, and this will be 
the last part of my presentation, we have prepared a video to promote these support services to managing authorities. Could I ask to uh, start the video, please? Thank you. Targeted coaching, in my personal opinion, is probably the best direct advisory assistance that DJ Agri has ever launched in the context of rural development. Under the initiative, uh, we try to help managing authorities understand what are the most recent processes, how financial instruments work, what is the nature of the instruments, uh, what they can expect for their programs. We give advice on policy and uh, content, and we hope that with this service, we can achieve much more with the financial instrument. Dès lors, sans ce targeting coaching, on nous en serions allés beaucoup moins vite, beaucoup moins rapidement pour élaborer cet instrument financier. On a pu bénéficier de leur expérience, mais aussi de leur pédagogie et de leur disponibilité. The training was very fruitful, helpful for us, and uh, from my side, I strongly recommend this because it's very, uh, very sufficient and very good uh, in terms of, for example, very detailed questions and quick answer. We also made use of the targeted coaching offered by the FI Compass. This was uh, consisted of a video conference and then a two-day uh, on-site training in our premises in Athens. We had the opportunity to learn about the agricultural and food processing sector in detail of what's impeding the investments and what's the gap between the financial conditions and the demand. El coaching eh, dirigido eh, ha sido muy importante para nosotros porque eh, nos ha ayudado a, a entrar en contacto con todos los eh, actores eh, que participan en el proceso. Targeted coaching from FI Compass helped a lot. For me, it's important to participate in those kinds of seminars to not only to uh, get more knowledge but also to um, systemize it in a way, also to see how others are doing it and how, where we can improve and of course to create some connections you know, to network a little bit so we have uh, contact points in a way with other colleagues. And if you'd like to take a look at that video again, you can find it on the Fee Compass webpage. So we're now going to move on to a Q&A panel with Sylvia, Liliana, and Bruno, who are joining me here live in the studio. You guys can put your questions to them using that question feature on the platform. Again, please ask the questions in English, and I can read them out to the panelists. Uh, but Sylvia, I wanted to start with a question for you. Uh, you mentioned 1 billion euros of total loans by 2022, right? It's a big, um, big number. How realistic is that number? Well, as, um, as indicated also before in my intervention, we really believe it's realistic. We have already progressed so much in the last uh, years, and uh, we see also progress in the last month. So we are very confident that we can uh, reach this objective, uh, and I think we are on a good track to get there. That sounds encouraging. Uh, Liliana, I did have a follow-up question from your presentation. So, I mean, EIF has had well-recognized experience with agri-financial instruments in the 2014 to 2020 programming period. Um, but how do you see the implementation of these instruments in the new multi-year multi financial framework, and more specifically, the new common agricultural policy? Um, yes, in the new MFF, um at the moment, I would say that um, I see two options for um, implementing agri-financial instruments. One would be under the EFRD, and one would be under the InvestEU MS compartment. Now we have to take into account the 
the specifics um, of the markets in the relevant mar uh, member state. Therefore, if we are in an environment with uh, lower liquidity and uh, high interest rates, I would see financial instruments uh, under AFRD uh, as being better suited for this, such as our funded risk-sharing instrument, uh, um, because um, they provide more liquidity and uh, also greater reduction in the interest rates. However, if um, the financing gap is mainly due to high risk and uh, lack of collateral, I believe uh, financial guarantees under InvestEU MS compartment would be better fitted. Uh, we consider uh, contributions to the MS compartment as an effective way forward that would bring uh, synergies between the new uh, CAP and the uh, general policy objectives of the EU. Furthermore, InvestEU offers a set of uh, streamlined rules and guidelines for implementing financial instruments um, so we can use a tested operational setup. Nevertheless, um, as uh, each uh, member state has uh, its own specific uh, policy objectives as well as uh, specific market conditions, our products would of course take into account these specificities. So Bruno, in your presentation, you laid out your experience uh, and the work done under the Fee Compass EAFRD work stream. What would be your, your main pieces of advice and recommendations for managing authorities, for EAFRD managing authorities, who are interested in using financial instruments under their CAP strategic plans? So I have, uh, I have a few tips for, for the managing authorities. I would start by saying to read carefully the control reports that I mentioned during my presentation. I would also, as a second tip, is to update or to start the extent assessment. If it's uh, needed, an update uh, could be based uh, on the reports, on the control reports that uh, were presented, uh, that I mentioned during my presentation. Um, as a third tip, uh, probably ask uh, for uh, the targeted coaching, uh, which is also we, we've been spending uh, quite a bit of time today uh, talking about targeted coaching. And then uh, probably last but not least, to share experience, to share doubts with other um, financial instrument stakeholders, would that be other managing authorities, and uh, uh, exchange uh, among each other. So this is also uh, quite important in uh, the future programming of financial instruments. Now, Sylvia, we've talked a lot about the, the pre-existing programming period and then how that's going to impact what's coming next mm -hmm. in the next programming period. So can member states continue the financial instruments that have existed before in the next period under the new CAP plans? Yes, of course, they, they can do that. Um, and uh, the, the issue is that they will need to transfer into the new um, programming period, respecting the rules of the new programming period. So respecting the rules set out for the uh, CAP strategy plans, but indeed they can do that. Um, and they can also, of course, continue what they are doing now. Uh, the, the current financial instruments, as we also heard uh, just before, can continue because we are still uh, within the implementation period and we still have some years to go until this is finalized. Uh, and therefore, as we also heard, uh, there can be reflections whether to continue in the new period or whether to start something completely new from the scratch. So indeed, there are various options there for the managing authorities. Liliana, another question for you when we're thinking about the previous programming period and how it compares to what's going to be going forward. If you look back at the previous programming period for 2014 to 2020, how do you see financial instruments better addressing the needs of agricultural and rural enterprises? How do you see that improving going forward? That is actually a very good question. And um, I would have to say that um, from my own experience with the, the reshoring fund, funded product in Romania, the working capital is one of the most um, un, um, underserved the uh, need of the fine farmers and agribusiness in, in, uh, in Europe. Um, and uh, this is mainly because of the current uh, EFRD regulation, which uh, does not allow working capital unless it is linked to an investment. Um, I think agriculture is, um, is a sector generally um, with low and fluctuating um, 
profit margins, which uh, drive the demand for finance uh, for working capital as uh, farmers need the financing to meet their day-to-day -day costs. And um, um, and I would see that uh, I would say that uh, that uh, by providing uh, working capital, um, that this uh, this form of short-term financing helps these uh, agribusinesses in uh, in managing better their uh, daily operations by uh, providing uh, capital to purchase raw material and uh, also by uh, helping them to repay their existing obligations from uh, once their uh, processed um, foods are, um, are sold. Also, um, I would say that um, under the new, the recently amended uh, EU regulatory framework, the rules uh, in respect of uh, working capital have been relaxed uh, in order to address, uh, to respond to the current unprecedented situation of, uh, of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so now, um, working capital standalone um, for up to 200,000 euros is allowed. And um, also the new AFRD regulation for the next programming period um, provides for uh, standalone working capital financing. And this could, be, this could prove to be a turning point for farms that um, require um, that are facing with um, fluctuating and um, and um, um, volatility in uh, in the in their uh, in the prices. Uh, so I think that uh, these these changes are are, are quite welcomed, and um, I believe that um, financing working capital through financial instruments is beneficial for the farmers and the agri businesses as uh, it's providing lending at uh, improved um, uh, terms. So would you expect uh, an increased focus on short-term financing in the next term? Uh, that could be, um, that could be a, a possibility, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've had a question come in to the, from the audience to Sylvia. Uh, the question is, uh, how does it go with the legal process with adoption of the secondary acts and the submission of the CAP strategic plans? So what is that legal process like? Yeah. So we are really um, in the final steps of this process, uh, uh, which has been quite long. If you consider the, um, that uh, the proposal from the commission uh, started in 2018, but uh, uh, it needs to go through the, um, the, all the stages of the co-legislation. So we are working with the co-legislators, with the parliament and with the council. Um, we are very confident that this is going to be finalized soon. So we will have um, not only the final uh, um, act in terms of the basic regulations, but also the secondary legislation. Uh, this is really in the final steps uh, of adoption. Uh, so in the next few weeks, so this should be finalized and this will allow also um, a member state to, um, to submit their plans. We have a legal deadline which is established in the regulation. They need to present the plans by the 1st of January of next year and we are really working hard to make sure that everything is, place, is in place both legally and operationally technically so that this is actually possible. So there are, uh, I believe we are very optimistic on the process and we are really working hard together with the Council and Parliament on that. Bruno, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about the technical support that's available to people. I mean, what might be available that people out there don't know about already? So, uh, well, we already mentioned uh, the targeted coaching. The targeted coaching is a, a rather important tool. It started really slowly, but now we have uh, quite a number of managing authorities asking for this service, which is really uh, bespoke, is tailor-made to the needs of a managing authority. So I would value this uh, first. Then uh, probably also, uh, we haven't mentioned too much, but it's the case study. So uh, take the case study as a source of inspiration. We try to come up not only with a written version, but also with a video version, which is much more easy uh, to access 
too. And um, again, uh, in general, uh, the fact that we are available, we are there and we can provide a support which is uh, really uh, taking uh, into account the needs of a um, managing authority in the different stages. So we heard that some of them are already in an advanced stage, have uh, experience, but there are a number which have uh, um, not even started playing with financial instruments. So uh, maybe for them it's a different approach. So we're able to calibrate according to the needs and to the degree of knowledge of uh, the uh, people involved uh, and the personnel involved in the managing authorities. Yeah, I suppose the degree of technical support depends on people's experience with financial instruments Correct. to start with. Um, we have another question from the audience. This question is again to Sylvia. Uh, so the question is, are there thoughts of improvements in the new CAP on combination financial, of, on combining financial instruments with grants? I think we have gone a long way already and as, uh, as I said before, we have introduced quite a number of uh, improvements, uh, uh, flexibilities in the system as also Liliana uh, recalled. So we are now really looking forward in a phase where we are looking forward to the managing authorities to come up with their own proposals based on the flexibilities which is exist already on the, in the legislation, which we have already started also to prove a bit uh, now, for example, when, with the working capital, um, uh, standalone working capital flexibility. So now really the ball is in the, in the camp of the managing authority. I like uh, Bruno saying, uh, play with it. It's not so, uh, I mean, it's still a quite complex uh, um, uh, issue, but I think with all this uh, um, targeting, coaching and assistance we are providing, uh, there is more and more experience there, allowing really the managing authorities to play with it. And an important element in all that, and I take the, the opportunity to, uh, to say that, is that we expect uh, now the member states in this phase to um, examine all the necessities, the needs on the ground. Uh, you, Bruno, re recalled uh, you know, the, the reports from last year. We also presented the recommendations to the member states uh, uh, in uh, December 2020. And there we also highlighted the needs of the member states in terms of access to finance, uh, support to small farmers, support to young farmers. So there is quite a lot uh, out there from us, but also I'm sure from you, from your uh, SWOT analysis. So um, uh, we expect all this to be very useful uh, material to, uh, to come up with a combination and, uh, and uh, products which are really targeted and designed for your specific needs. Well, our next question from the audience is for Liliana. Uh, will InvestEU products offered by EIF also cover agriculture? Uh, yes, as I mentioned in my uh, previous answer, um, we do expect and welcome um, um, in, uh, to, to, design, to have uh, financial products under the InvestEU, the MS compartment uh, at the moment. And uh, like I said, uh, I think this is a good way to, to combine and to, to make sure that uh, the financial instruments um, are um, easier deployed on the market as they follow um, a streamlined set of rules and guidelines. So uh, this is a focus for us and uh, we are keen to implement um, agriculture financial instruments under the InvestEU MS compartment, yes. And I wonder, do you also have thoughts on the previous question about combining uh, FIN grants that, that it could be made easier through the CAP. Um, do you envision improvements there as well? A combination with grants, you mean? Or? Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, we already have a pro product in Romania which, uh, which offers combination with grants, uh, perhaps not in, uh, in the way uh, going forward, but uh, we have a combination, uh, we have the possibility to combine uh, financial instruments with grants. Uh, meaning uh, for projects uh, that have uh, received um, approval for grants uh, from, the, from the local authorities in Romania, uh, the, um, the respective uh, farmers can go to a bank and, um, and uh, ask for the difference in the financing so that can cover the whole project. Okay, let me put a... Oh, Bruno, yeah? Can I, can I compliment uh, Liliana's uh, comment? So, uh, under InvestEU, member states have the opportunity to contribute uh, at central level a portion of their uh, cohesion fund. 
So uh, Liliana was referring to MS, it's member state compartment, which is uh, a specific compartment which in the end, and when it comes to agriculture, will be uh, managed by the European Investment Fund. So this is another opportunity which uh, came up through the new uh, regulation and through InvestEU uh, for the member states. And it actually is a quite an important uh, option uh, for the member states which have not planning to set up financial instruments uh, with uh, their uh, EIFRD money uh, through their own uh, um, cap uh, strategic plan. Yeah, makes sense. Um, maybe before we wrap up, I could take a final question to each of you, um, which is looking forward now, as we look forward um, in, in the next programming period, what do you think is going to be the key to success? What will be the metric that we can really measure a successful next programming period for the Sylvia? So for me, really, the, the um, enlarging from the financial instruments to the overall policy, I would say, uh, really have a policy which is fit for purpose on the ground. So now we have all the basic regulations in place. Now let's have cap strategic plans in place, which really responds to the need of each member state and also respond to the higher needs, to the political priorities where we the green and digital transition. Liliana, what do you think will be the key to success? Yes, um, I believe that um, agriculture is one of the most important sectors uh, in the EU. But in order to stay uh, resilient and competitive, it has to uh, become more modern, uh, has to become more green and more innovative. Uh, but this transformation uh, comes at a cost and, um, and uh, we at EIF uh, are ready to step up our efforts into financing um, SMEs into this, for, through this transition. But uh, we cannot do this alone. So uh, we, we want to strengthen our collaboration with the managing authorities, the European Commission, and the local uh, implementing partners, the financial institutions. Um, we be I believe that um, we each have a role to play uh, in this, and including the, final, the farmers and the agribusinesses, if we want to achieve uh, long-term, uh, long-lasting uh, results. And that's certainly a similar message to what we heard from Copa Kajaka before. So I think right. the farmers and the cooperatives are on board. Bruno, what do you think will be the key for success? Well, for me, representing or coming from uh, financial institutions, probably I would say uh, the access or more access to finance, particularly for um, the small farmers, for the young farmers. So in all in all is the volumes in which will be uh, deployed in the market. But I would also would like to uh, underline the change of mentality. More and more entrepreneurs, yes, uh, consider grants, but are more and more willing uh, to go for loans uh, and through financial instruments, which is uh, a beginning of a change of mentality, which starts with uh, agri-holding, uh, young farmers, small farmers, through the old chain uh, uh, of uh, the entities which are dealing with EIFRD uh, financial instruments. Great. And before we close, we do have one last question that's come in for Sylvia. Uh, so the question is, providing solely working capital under COVID-19 is ending in, uh, December, on December, 20, uh, December 31st, 2021. Is the commission envisaging a time extension uh, to that? And based on the current situations, should one year be sufficient? So uh, we are um, in the new legislation which we are um, finalizing now, we keep this um, option of the standalone working capital. So this is, I think, very good news because in the following uh, programming periods with the new plans, this possibility will continue. So therefore, I invite really uh, managing authorities to consider, as also Liliana said, this option as a real option also for the future. Okay, good thank advice. You. Well, thank you to all three of you for answering some of our questions that came in from the audience. Uh, I think what we're hearing from those closing statements from the three of you is a new way of thinking going forward, learning the, the successes and what didn't work so well in, in the previous period and taking that and really an emphasis on modernization and a change in thinking about agriculture and financial instruments, building on the success that we've seen so far. So thank you so much to all three of you. We're now going to have some 
closing remarks, so I will turn the floor over to Mikhail Pielka, head of Unit F3 at the European Commission's Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development. Dear experts for managing authorities, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, today we have marked the end of a period during which all of us put enormous efforts in building up knowledge on financial instruments and experience in the implementation. You made financial instruments a common element of our agricultural policy and helped eliminating weaknesses noticed in the previous programming period. In short, we kept on our promise to double our 2007-2013 level of implementation. And in fact, we are doing much more. This is somehow the end of a preparatory phase during which we laid the ground for a sustainable and more effective spending of CAP resources. And I'm very grateful that we cooperate with such an enthusiasm and collegiality and that today we can celebrate the success. The different speakers have shown the positive results with practical examples, and we have also received the political support. The challenge ahead of us is how to best utilize the limited resources we have under CPT, CAP and to good, make good programs. And in this context, we have to see what financial products we need to develop and to launch. Financial instruments are success in this period and can be a success in future when the CAP plans start funding projects and activities. We had so far a significant amount of analysis and webinars and many other activities. And these activities prepared us for the next period. In future, we hope that we'll, you will not hesitate using more resources to fund riskier and innovative projects through financial instruments. We remain at your disposal for any questions you may have. And again, I strongly recommend to our managing authorities to look into all possible types of support. And in this context, to properly evaluate the benefits of having financial instruments programmed. I thank all of the participants that have joined our event, and I hope that you have enjoyed it. Finally, I am pleased to announce that on the 15th of December, we will have a new webinar on financial instruments for rural infrastructure. There, we will look closely into a study prepared, prepared by the EIB Advisory Hub. The question is, can financial instruments help promoting rural infrastructure? I would also like to thank Bruno and his team for helping us with the organization of the conference and to our moderator Dave for joining us for the first time. I would also like to thank the interpreters for their excellent job. Finally, I wish you all a nice afternoon. Thanks very much, Mikael. And that wraps it up for today's event. Thank you to all of the speakers and to you at home for spending your morning with us. Now, all the slides you've seen today will be available in the coming weeks on the Fee Compass page. And the platform that you're on right now will remain accessible for the next two weeks. So you can go back and you can rewatch any of the videos of today's sessions. Or if you already watched them and you want to recommend them to somebody, you can send them here. They'll be available starting tomorrow. You can also find more content on the Fee Compass webpage, such as new case studies on Greece, Portugal, and Poland, which have been released for the conference. You can also find podcasts on the implementation of an EAFRD guarantee instrument in Greece and on the use of financial instruments in member states' CAP strategic plans. Finally, we'd like to ask you to take the time to answer a survey, which you can access with the QR code that should be popping up on your screen right now. You can tell us how you enjoyed the event, what you'd like to see for future events. Uh, you can also answer that survey in an email that you'll receive in the coming days. So if you don't have time right now, don't worry, you'll have another opportunity. We'd really like to hear your feedback about today's event. 
Well, I hope that you guys found today's event enjoyable and informative. Certainly a lot to look forward to and a lot to think about when we're building on the success of the program so far and thinking about how we can make things even better in the next period. Uh, so thank you for spending your morning with us and I wish you all a great afternoon wherever you are.